not a tournament. It's what you don't see on TV. The cash is real. The stakes are high. They bet big. They win big. They lose big. High stakes live action poker. Live at the bike. Watch it live on the web. Or play it if you dare at the Bicycle Casino right here in Los Angeles. Hello and welcome to Live at the Bike. I'm David Tuckman and thank you for joining us. I am going solo tonight because Bart is sick. Um, we'll have to try to guess where he really is tonight. Uh, anyway, tonight's action, we've got a $200 no limit restricted buy-in game. Uh, we had an 816 limit hold'em game, but it broke just before the show started. So uh, Donna quickly gathered the players together and we got a no limit game going on right now. And uh, let's get to the action. I'll talk about the Lakers game real later on. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Seat number one, we've got Hector sporting the uh, Red Sox hat there. Seat number two, we've got Art. Art's kind of a no-limit player as well. Uh, a lot of kind of short there. Seat number three is Owen. Now, Owen's normally our, our 816 limit player. Interesting to see how he'll play uh, no limit tonight. Seat number four, we've got Eric V. And Eric is uh, new to the show. He's got that uh, side hat thing going on. See how it goes. Seat number five is straight out of Australia. It's Rob. And uh, there he is, sporting the red hat. Seat number six, we've got James, also a new player to the show. He's got about $400 in front of him. This is one of those games that kind of starts out slow. And as more chips hit the table, the game can really pick up. Seat number seven, we've got Ruben. And uh, Ruben's kind of uh, live at the bike. He's been on a couple times now. Harold, wow, I've never seen Harold play No Limit. Be interesting to see how a limit player adjusts to No Limit. Obviously, a lot of differences in the game. Seat number nine, we've got Eric B. And uh, Eric, also a limit player, but I've seen him play No Limit. Oftentimes, he likes to play on live the bike, and then after the show, he'll go play No Limit. So I'm kind of excited to do this show by myself. And uh, here we go. Why don't we get to the first hand? If you want to keep the show interactive, because we like to so I don't get bored here. Uh, you can email us at live at thebike.com. You can also join us on a live thread over at 2plus2.com. Go to forums, go to World Poker Tour and other events, then go to uh, Live at the Bike for May 1st. May 1st. Wow, and Hector's gonna raise it up with Ace. Big slick there. Uh, Art's gonna call. Art's got a weak Ace, he's got Ace 8. Our Australian friend Rob is gonna call. And we're going to see this four ways. $60 pot. Flop is 9, 8, 3, couple of spades. And Art has outflopped everybody. Art's got a second pair. Hector's going to continue betting. Kind of a weak bet, though. 15 into 60. And, uh, you know, Art's going to just call this. It's always an interesting play. You're just calling here. I guess it's kind of like, let me see where I'm at. Problem is, you're leaving draws in behind you. And look at that. Wow. Rob took one off with the pocket fours, and he catches his set on the turn, but it's the third spade. He has no idea if he's good. Now, he happens to be, you know, he's got the hand locked up. He cannot lose the pot, but how does he know that? And Rob's going to go all in. That's uh, all in for Australian. Where's the Fosters, man? Yeah, and he's moving all in for 140 more, and I don't think anybody's going to call. I mean, you look at the spades are out there. I mean, best hand is already got ace eight, no spade at, at all. Everybody's drawing dead. This is a pretty easy laydown. We're going to move on here. So it's going to be kind of exciting without Bart here to keep me in tow. I might just like go crazy, say something obscene. You never know. Is he really thinking? No, he's not really thinking, is he? Come on. The guy called you. The flop's 983. He called you. What do you think he had? I mean, in this case, he actually had po pocket fours. But what can you beat with ace eight? Anyway, I think Bart is kind of jealous. He was jealous of the whole uh, Lakers thing, so he's taking the night off. Supposedly, he's sick. Yeah. 
Yeah. My money's on the fact. I think he's getting laid. I saw him walking out with some hottie little Asian chick. I bet you he's getting laid. We'll see. Find out the scoop on it. Somebody wants to start a poll. Actually, email me. Let me know where you think Bart is. And uh, Art does finally throw it away. Rob takes it down. And seven of diamonds in the river doesn't change anything. I want to congratulate Jay Siegel, Pojato, on two plus two. He actually won the, uh, what did he win here? He won the points playoff, no limit hold'em tournament yesterday. And I think he won, uh, what did he win? $10,000. Wow, pretty good by Pojato there. That's pretty, I mean, that's pretty impressive for a potato. Button moves over to seat number seven. And we're going to get a raise from Art here. He's going to raise it up. He's got big like now, Ace King. And he makes it $15 to go. Now, this is one of those games, a no limit, it's a restricted buying game, very different from the unrestricted games. Um, if you go below 100, you can bring your stack back up to actually 300. If you go to felt, you can also bring your stack up to $300. The blinds are $3 and $5. And in the beginning of the game, you only actually have 40 times the big blind. So oftentimes, you know, one raise in one continuation bet, you almost sometimes find yourself committed to the pot. <coughs> I kind of, I think this game actually kind of plays like a short stack tournament in a weird way. Except the fact that the blinds do not escalate, obviously. A couple of limpers there. Button move over to seat eight there. And we're going to see this uh, four ways. And flop is king... 9-3, rainbow, 5 on the turn. And uh, not much for anybody. I mean, Eric's going to bet this. Yeah, Eric is going to bet this. He's got a 9. Figures it's the best hand, and it is. Take it down. Eric wins himself a pot. Let's see, so I'm checking this out here. So i got to tell you, I'm actually not a huge basketball fan. You guys at home know I'm not a big NBA fan. But I got to tell you, if you're ever going to go see a, an event, sitting in those suites, that is the way to do it. I mean, it is unbelievable. Walked in, there's beer there, there's drinks, salads, buffalo wings, food, whatever you want. Oh, man, I got to tell you, it's the way to see an event. It really is. Button moves over to seat number nine. And six is going to raise it up. He's got a couple of queens there, James. Two red ladies. What is on his shirt? Hmm. Interesting. $20 raise there from James. And we get a caller. Owen's going to call it the weak ace. And Owen hits his ace. James is going to put a little bit of continuation bet out there. And we know Owen from his uh, limit hold'em games. I don't think he's going to go anywhere. I mean, he's got a terrible ace here. Turns a 10. I mean, you've got to realize now there's not much you can beat if you have queens. And checks around. Six of the turn changes nothing. Owen's going to win this with aces and tens and a jack kicker. And it gets checked down. Now, James had some outs there. He needed a queen or a king. Would have taken it for him. But Owen wins himself a $60 pot. Button moves over to seat number one. I'm going to tell you, Eric Lindgren is everywhere. I'm checking out this new, uh, the newest Bluff magazine. He's on the front page. Everybody's All-American. Eric Lindgren is living the poker dream. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Limp, limp, limp. And, uh... Limps around. Owen's going to complete with a hand as weak as from his five deuce in the small blind. He throws in the extra couple of bucks. 
And he hits trip deuces. What do I know? And normally it's not a bad flop for James, but you've got to realize you're in there against a couple of blind players. They could easily have a deuce. They could have anything. You never know. Now I think once Owen calls this, you pretty much know you're behind. Now Owen's going to slow play this. He doesn't realize that slow playing this. I mean, think about it. Look at the board. It's nine deuce deuce. Rainbow. Obviously no straight draw. If a guy has pocket threes, what the heck can he be? You know what I mean? And he's going to check. James will check, and now Owen's probably going to put a bit on the river. And there you go. Now, if you're in James's, if you're in James's shoe, I mean, you've got to sit there and go, okay, there's no way I can beat anything. I mean, we do know some lag tards, I guess you guys call them on two plus two, some laggy players that kind of call to make a move, to set up a move later on. But you really think Owen is doing that? Generally, in this game. The straightforward play is the way to go. The Russ Fox school of poker, I say. Or you, I guess you could say the Jay Siegel school of poker. So it's funny, on Thursday night, I actually got involved in my uh, biggest pot of my life. Actually, two of my biggest pots of my entire life in a span of about 45 minutes that I was going to talk about on Friday. I never got around to it, though. Um, one was with uh, Dimitri, of course. And the other one was, was with uh, Barry, and if you guys remember Barry, Persian Barry, who uh, plays oftentimes in the 10-20 game. He'll play once in a while there. Very aggressive player. Limps around. Six ways, $30 pot. Jack, 8-4, rainbow. And uh, Ruben's got a set of fours. Now, Owen's got top pairs. Owen's going to get himself in trouble here. And Owen's going to bet it. Now, Ruben had checked the set of fours very predictably. And uh, now this is the problem with... Now, C4, wow, he's going to raise this up. He's got jack nine. We don't have that up there yet. Seat number four's got jack nine. Jack clubs nine of hearts. And sure enough, Ruben is going to move all in. Now, this is the question here. Can you get away from it? Now, I think if you're Owen, you can easily get away from it. Now, you've been raised and re-raised. And Eric's going to throw it away, too. Nice lay down. Often the best way to make money on that pot is actually to bet right into it. Put yourself, put a $40 bet in there. Your opponent probably calls 40 Maybe the other guy raises. Who knows? Then on the turn, you put a $50 bet in. You kind of bleed him. By putting in that big check raise, you kind of let him off the hook. We've seen that a couple of times. Now, Stars and Stripes is over, um, but I don't think we have to wait too long because our next tournament is when? Like in two weeks, it's, uh, what is it? Help me out here, somebody. There we go. It is the Poker Classic, America's Poker Classic, starting on May 22nd. Got it in front of me. Button's over in seat four. Looks like we're going to see this. Uh, well, actually, the seat number four has got East King suited on. Actually, East King offsuit on the button. He's going to make it 25 to go. And I don't know if anybody's going to call him here. No, nah, it doesn't look like it. And he's going to take this down. Picks himself up about $18. Not a bad bet at all. And here, I get the email from Boston here. Dave. Bart mentioned the big hand from Thursday night. It happened after I left, I guess. The straight over the set of fours in the turn, and then he filled up. Yeah, and, and actually, Boston, if you guys know Boston, he um, obviously plays in our game all the time. And I was playing with him the 10-20 game after the show on Thursday night, after our pot limit game. I played pot limit for a little while in the game, switched to no limit, and got into a, a couple of big hands, and I was sitting next to Boston. And uh, I'll get to it in a second when we get a little bit of a lull in the action. We're going to see this five ways, $25 pot. And it's uh, ace, 10, five, couple of hearts out there. Now we got an ace in seat number five. Our Australian friend Rob's got it. You know, I'm going to say hi to Rob's family in Australia. What time is it there? What is it, like 20 hours ahead? It's probably actually tomorrow, isn't it? May 2nd there? Yeah. And wow, look at that a bet from Hector. He actually had an ace, and Rob did not want to get involved with his ace. And Hector's going to take it now. It's a monster flop for Hector. I didn't, I didn't actually see his hand. Top pair with the nut flush draw. And uh, Hector bet, and he took it down. 
Button moves over to seat number six. Small blind is three dollars. That's for Ruben in seat seven. Big blind is Harold in seat number eight. And Eric is under the gun. Kind of a fun night tonight. Isaac's not in the booth. So we got Ray doing the directing. We got Evelyn on camera. Ronnie at the cards. James is going to raise it up on the button with a couple of kings. And now this is really a, an implied odds question. Now in this game, rarely do you have the odds to call a decent sized raise with a small pocket pair. Now when you step up to the 500 game, or even the 3 to 500 game, the 5-5 five, five blind game, sometimes you can call there. You know, you're getting 10, 12, 14 to 1 sometimes. In a game like this, rarely do you have enough though. And we're going to see this three ways though. And wow, well the flop is a uh, Queen, deuce, eight, couple of hearts out there. Now, Eric V in seat number four has got the flush draw. He's got the nut flush draw, and he's going to bet right into the kings. And he's moving all in, and I would imagine James is going to call this. Yeah, and this is pretty much almost a coin flip here, because Eric's overcard is good. Eric needs an ace. Now, imagine, obviously, Harold's going to throw his hand away. Eric needs an ace or a heart, so he's got nine outs to the win. And you can see it's pretty much a coin flip here. There's a five. He's picked up more outs here. He needs a five, an ace, or a heart. They're not going to get there. Jack of clubs on the river, and James takes it down. Take it down, Mr. Brown. I think that's the first time that actually worked, because the guy's name is James. I get it? Okay. Anyway, just humoring myself. You know, it's funny. I, I uh, was talking to my wife right before I jumped into the uh, booth, and I said, you know, hey, I'm doing the show alone. And she goes, Oh, so you'll be talking to yourself for like three hours. And I go, well, pretty much. And she goes, well, you do that at home all the time. I don't listen to you at home, so same difference. I was like, wow, man, some fighting words. Man. Button moves over to seat number seven. Yeah, I know, I know, Ray. <laughs> And this is going to get folded around here. They're going to chop it up. Now, if you want to check out our website, you can go to live at thebike.com, spelt out. And uh, we got a bunch of cool features. We've got like terminology that Bart and I like to use. We've got my bio, Bart's bio, my blog, under the gun. Um, what else we got? All sorts of stuff. We have the archives. You can get this show and every show we've ever had. Just click on the archives, top left hand corner. Barry Greenstein, Kenneth James, Kathy Liebert. The Grinder. I mean, I'm telling you, we've got everybody on the show. We had Scott Huff on the show last week. Scott Huff, a uh, writer for Card Player. He also uh, he also does The Circuit. You can check that out. Go to cardplayer.com, check out The Circuit. Bart and I were on that in uh, late February, actually. Get a raise here from James, and I don't think anybody's going to call. Well, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Here, we'll see. Now, Rob is out of position with a suited king, and he's not going to call. That's a good lay down there by Rob. Might be a good hand in Australia, but in America, we don't like that hand. Get a nice email here from James Gelfer. I'll read it in a second here. Button moves over to seat number nine. Now, feel free to send in emails and talk to me tonight. Pocket aces for Art here in the big blind. Takes a look at him. He likes what he sees. Puts him in the window. There they are. Always a pretty sight. And Ruben is going to raise it up here with an ace five suit, and he makes it 25 to go. It's a pretty big raise in this game. Now, you talk about a raise in this game, and Art is going to immediately re-raise this, and he's, and he's moving all in. I mean, it's easy fold for Ruben now. Art is taking all the play out of it here. I thought maybe he'd do a little mini raise, maybe make it 40 to go or 45 to go. Uh, but wow, Ruben is going to call... And he is in such bad shape. I can't believe that. Wow. Like I said, I mean, in this game, 
oftentimes the best play to do is just play it straight forward. And uh, unless Ruben gets real, real lucky, Art's going to double up here. Got about a $200 pot here. Yeah, that's not going to help. Well, he's picked up a flush draw here. Needs a club. Oh, man, I tell you, that's a bad beat. That is really ugly. Oh, I tell you. I mean, you look at that flop and you go, okay, I look pretty safe there. There's not much. There's no five. There's only one club. And running clubs and Ruben wins. And Man, Art, don't worry about it, buddy. I know you're going to probably watch the show later. And that's just, that's just poker. Don't worry about it. Nothing you can do. I mean, it's not even like you slow played it or you got tricky or something. You moved all your money in, and some guy calls you with ace five clubs. I mean, you got to realize that when you make it twenty-five dollars to go, and a guy moves all in, I, I just don't understand how you can call with ace five clubs. I mean, at best you have three outs, right? I mean, you got to figure the guy's either got a pocket pair higher than fives, or he's got an ace that dominates your ace. So basically, you either need a five, you need your ace, or you need clubs. Now the pot was 25.50. I want to say the pot was what 125.75 to call. I mean, he wasn't even getting two to one on his money. I mean, I mean, oftentimes you can make, you can kind of say, let's say you have nine, ten suited there, and you are screwing around. Oftentimes you can actually call it that, thinking, okay, well maybe my cards are alive at least. But with an ace five, that's one of those hands you really don't want to be involved with. The hand is so easily dominated. And uh, we're gonna see this uh, three ways. Rob had limped in with king queen offsuit in early position. And we're going to see a $15 pot to the flop. Flop is 9 6 3. Actually, it's four ways. I'm sorry, Eric B is in the hand with 9 10 suited. And you know what? He's got top pair. Top pair with backdoor spades. Nobody else has got much of anything. Art's got second pair. Two hearts out there. That should get him out, though. Eric's going to put a little bet out there, see where he's at. He's in late position. And Rob calls. It's just overcards. And this is one of the problems I always have with a player who plays king-queen slowly. Now, it's not like king-queen's a monster, but you see players do it with ace-king also. You limp in with king-queen or ace-king. Okay. No problem with that. Now the flop comes at 9-6-3 with two hearts. And you have king-queen, black king-queen. Now, I mean, in this case, he actually raised it up, and he's going to win the pot. But i got to tell you, in a game like this, it's just not usually the way to go. I mean, obviously, raising with that hand is, is far superior to calling with that hand. Um, but Rob actually check-raised with that hand. Really put a lot of pressure on him. Basically had to bluff at it with a lot of money, committing a lot of chips to it. And if seat number nine, if Eric just calls him, well, then what do you do? You get a black king-queen. Sometimes you can't judge a poker move by the result. Okay, here, James Gelfer. Yesterday, Full Contact poster host, post Poker hosted the Daniel Negrano Protégé Contest Final Table webcast. Daniel and some other fool, oh, okay, that's his words, not mine, did a commentary for the webcast. First of all, your commentary is far better than theirs, and this made me appreciate your show even more than I already do. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. So does Bart. Speak for him. Secondly, Daniel's co-host said he thought that they were the, doing the first live poker webcast. Well, Daniel corrected him by saying and stated that Live at the Bike hosted live cash games every week. Thought you guys would be interested in hearing that one of the biggest names in poker has heard of you. And yeah, no, although we've actually Daniel Agrano is one of the few big, big names that we've never had on the show. I wonder why that is. And Eric B here flops a set of nines. And Ruby calls. Wow. Can't believe he called the raise. Well, look at this. Now he's picked up a flush draw. And now he's going to call. He's almost definitely going to call, and he does. And if he catches another diamond here. And then he is. Oh, my God. You've got to be kidding me. This guy, like, sleeps the devil. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, two times he gets ace five of clubs versus pocket aces against runner, runner clubs to win. And here he has second pair against top set with backdoor diamonds. I mean, he's drawing dead to either running diamonds, running eights, or running aces. 
I mean, you realize an eight and an ace wouldn't have done it. Because that would have been eights full of aces while the other guy had nines full of eights. Oh, man, I tell you, this guy is just absolutely killing everybody. Nothing you can do about that, man. You get your money in with the best of it, and it doesn't always work out. He said two, but I thought you had three. Yes, he had three, but he said two. Well, I want to thank James for that email. I really do appreciate it. Couple of limpers. And wow, Rob is limping in here at nine deuce off suit. Once again, it's a good blackjack hand, but not usually a good poker hand. I mean, I guess you can say, well, I'm on the button, maybe I can take it away from everybody, but nine deuce, I mean, what do you really want to hit? And a king on the turn. Owen has now made a king. A pair of kings here. He's got no kicker, though. And he's got to throw some money in there. And take it down. I mean, there are a lot of hands now in a, in a loose passive game. I'll oftentimes open up my, my game a little bit, and I'll start limping in or raising with different kind of hands, especially on the button. But nine deuces a hand up. You'll almost never see me in there, really. Get another email here from Adam. Gets it in a heartbeat. Button moves over to seat number six. Aces in the small blind for Ruben. And I tell you, if there's a poker god anywhere, he'll get a bad beat, right? And he's going to make it. Wow. He only makes it 30. He makes it 25 more. Actually, that's not bad in this game. Is anybody going to call him? Now, Rob's got a hand that. Oh, wow. Rob doesn't call. That's funny. Now, see, I would rather call a raise a 7-9 suited than ace-5 suited. At least I think my hand, my cards are live. Okay, here. Um, Adam, hello. I'm new to your broadcast, and I'm enjoying it tremendously so far. In regards to watching limit play, I think it would be fun to watch mid-limit or higher limit games, but personally, I have little interest in 8-16. Okay. Your analysis of games such as this, being like a tournament, strikes me as accurate. Thanks. He said, do you feel that these type of games are commonly offered because players like and request them? And why, basically, why are the games in here? And essentially, you know, it's funny. No Limit was big in the 80s and even earlier than then. It kind of died out. You've got to realize that players that are flooding into the game are playing No Limit Hold'em. And it's in the casino's best interest to keep them coming back. And if everybody's playing unrestricted games and you lose your entire bankroll in one day, well, that's not going to help the casino. So we want to keep people going up. We got three ways here. Pot was slightly raised up, small little bump up, and Art had made it out like fifteen dollars to go with Ace Four. And uh, Hector's gonna bet here with pocket eights though, and I know it's not a bad flop for Hector. Wow, and Art's gonna call this. Now Ace Four clubs, I mean, you really got nothing here. Now James at least has got a pair. I mean, if you think Hector's maybe got diamond draw, okay. But now Art's called as well, so. And there's a 10. Can you represent that? I mean, that's got to be. Hector likes his 8s even better now. And why not? Time to release if you're Art here, huh? I mean, you, don't have, a, you have an ace 4. And he's going to raise it up. Wow. Making a move here, trying to represent the 10. Now, the only question is that would he have raised with a 10 on the flop? Let's say he had ace 10 or king 10 or something like that. Would he have raised on the flop? I mean, it's a real dangerous board. Two diamonds, five, six, straight draws, flush draws. Would he have done that with a 10? Would he just smooth call with a 10? Or does maybe he have, uh, is he trying to represent even pocket nines or pocket sevens and think, wait a second, maybe this guy doesn't have a 10? Obviously, Hector can't see the cards. But we can. 
I mean, and you can see how what bad shape Art is in here, but he's going to take this down. Nice play by Art, I guess. Man, what do I know? Um, anyway, though, this game, we have a, basically everybody that is coming to the casinos now after watching the World Poker Tour, ESPN, and getting into poker through this big poker craze, most new players are playing no limit hold'em. Well, I think it would be unrealistic to expect a lot of these players to jump into an unrestricted, like, 5-10 blind game where pots can be five, six, seven thousand dollars um, $7,000. Obviously, that would scare people away. It would kill people's bankrolls and so forth and so on. Um, so, obviously, we want to create games that are comfortable for everybody. So, we have a $40 game. We have an $80 No Limit game. We have a $100 game. We have this game. And they keep going up all the way to our Wednesday Whale game, which is a twenty-five fifty blind game. And he says, what is the rake in this game? This game's rake's actually $4 rake. And it's the same rake for all No Limit games. Ace, queen, queen. Now, Harold has picked up an ace. Is he going to get involved? Cocktail, Rob's got the big ace, and, and uh, Hector's completely missed. And we're going to get a little $15 bet from Rob. And Harold's not going to get involved, and I don't mind that lay down at all. You gotta look at that flop and go, okay, I can't really beat an ace. I also can't beat a queen. Why get involved? It's not really the flop you're looking for with ace four. Uh, now the 2550 blind game is a timed collection game. But all the games up till then, our 1020 blind game that we showcase on Friday nights, our pot limit 1020 game on Thursday nights, those games are all collection games. And those are all $4 rakes. Once again, we're live at the bike, folks. I'm David Tuckman. I'm going solo tonight. Bart is uh, not feeling well. 10-5 deuce. A couple of spades out there. Art's going to put a $15 bet in there. He's got the best hand. He's got a pair of fives, and he's going to take it down. Good to see Surfing Alina on the post. How you doing over there in Vegas? One of our uh, two plus two is Surfing Illini, known as Jeff Klein, also been on the show a couple of times, actually numerous times. I think he's in, are you in Vegas now? I know he uh, gave up his job and he's going to be a professional poker player for a few months, see how it goes in Vegas. <laughs> Reading a post here from Eastern Block. Someone needs to fill me in exactly what a lag tart is. And then he says, have you ever seen Tuck play? Wow. <laughs> oh, man. King 10-4, a couple of hearts out there. And the best hand is actually going to be, is it C number 9 with a 5-4? It is. Well, that's chopped up between O and N, Eric. Nobody's got an ace out there. And Eric's going to put a little bet out there. He's in late position. I like the bet. And he takes it down. Take it down, Mr. Brown. Button moves over to seat number two. Small blind is Owen. Big blind is Eric. And uh, Rob. I want to say hi to his family in Australia. Wow. I wonder if they're watching it live. All right, watching it live. That's cool. That's sweet. That's awesome. One of his poker buddies is gonna give him crap about nine deuce. Pocket queens. Couple of ladies for Ruben. Twenty-five. He makes it twenty-five to go. And Art's not gonna get involved. Art at jack ten. And in this game, when you only have two hundred dollars, do you really want to put in there? I mean, you're talking twelve and a half percent of your stack. Um, with a hand like Jack-10. It's probably too much money in there. Oftentimes, while if I ever go broke in this game, I actually sometimes if I buy in this game, in this game, I usually don't play this game, but if I do, I'll often sometimes gamble up in the beginning, try to build up my stack a little bit. If it doesn't work and I get down to 100, I'll quickly rebuy and get it up to $300 so I can feel like I can play a little bit more.
Hey, did anybody see uh, the uh, Chris Kamen thing? I can't believe that guy was trying to. Did, did anybody see it? Ray, you see that man? Yeah. He didn't try to kick him. He, tried, he, he went in there and grabbed his balls. The guy in Denver. Fun boy. King 9 3. Couple of diamonds. Big flop for Eric in seat number four. He's got a pair with a diamond trouble. He does not bet it. And a six on the turn. And he still has the best hand, but he doesn't want to put any money in the pot. And now he's made his flush. And, uh, and he bets $15 here. Now, oftentimes, if you have a hand as strong as a 9 7 of diamonds with a flop like that, I'll bet right into it. If somebody has a king, I don't mind. I mean, my hand is strong enough to go to war with. I can really fight with that hand. Sometimes a hand like that is actually better than top pair with a flush draw. So oftentimes if you have top pair with a flush draw and you get and you get any resistance from somebody else, well, oftentimes they'll share your top pair with a better kicker than you, which would give you nine outs for the flush draw plus your three additional, you know, you can hit your kicker, which gives you 12 outs. But if you have second pair and somebody, say, has king, queen, or king, jack on a board like this, well, I can hit my nine, my seven, or my diamond. It gives me 14 outs. Yeah, I'm still wondering where does everybody think? Where there it is? Kev Matt says, "Here's a poll for you, Tuck. Where is Bart Hansen right now? Either at home sick, playing over at Commerce, or uh, looking for Asian nipples." Well, there you go. I vote for looking for Asian nipples for sure. Bart moves over to seat number five. bike every Monday through Friday 7 to 10 p.m. We are playing $200 restricted buying game. This is a no limit game. Blinds are three and five. Now Owen's going to make it $15 with Ace Queen and look at that. Wow. Eric's money was in before Owen's money was in there. Eric calls him with a suited Ace. Is James going to get involved with Ace Nine? Yeah he is. Wow. And uh, the odds are most, most of the players are going to miss. King, King, Ten and sure enough they do. Owen's going to put a little continuation bet out there. And that'll probably be enough to take it down. He does have a straight draw. And he's going to take it. Hand like East 9 offsuit. Not a hand I really want to play out of position, especially not to a raise. Buttons over in seat number six. Eric's going to call here. Now, Ruben's got king queen suited in seat number seven. Wow, and we're going to get a raise here of ace queen out of art in seat number two. James is not going to call. See, now that's interesting. James will call the raise out of position with ace nine off suit, but on the button with 10 eight of clubs. No, no, I'm not going to get involved. And I think you can see there, 10 8 of clubs clearly on the button has more value than ace 9 offsuit out of position. Board of 9 7 4. Now, he would have been open ended. I'm not saying it's a great hand, but it's, he still would have been open ended. Uh, a couple of hearts out there. Now, Ruben called, called with uh, King Queen suited, hand that you can get in trouble with. And Eric's going to call with pocket eights. And we're going to see this heads up. A 5. And actually, Hector's in there. I'm sorry. 75. All in? Well, and, and, wow. Hector is moving all in now. He's got 5 7. He hit two pair. Obviously, Art's going to lay this down. And now it's a question for $35. I don't think you can lay this down with an 8. Now he needs an 8 or a 6. And there's the 8. Look at that. Wow. Set for Eric B. And he takes it down. And that's, sometimes that happens in this game where. 
oftentimes the pot, like in that case, the pot's $250, $300, and you're looking at it, and the guy's, it's $35 more. You're getting nine to one on your money. I don't think there's any way you can throw that away. You're not sure if your eight is good, but you're pretty sure if a six comes, you're good, because that's a straight. And Eric takes down about, I want to say actually about a $300 pot. I'm waiting for email. People have to email me here. Button is over in seat seven. Now, one of the reasons I compare this game to a small, like a restricted buy-in, like a small, a small buy-in tournament where you don't get a lot of chips. It's often like the same way. Let's say it's a non. Let's say if you consider it not a rebuy tournament, and you were to play the first couple of levels like this, where you really can't call with, uh, you know, you can't call with small pairs for big implied odds because you don't get that many chips. And oftentimes in those smaller tournaments, it's really imperative that you win your first couple of hands and get some chips. Ace eight three here. Nobody's got much of anything. Rob has got a gut shot straight draw. Nobody's got an ace. Nobody has an eight. Nobody has a three. 30? But that's not going to stop Rob from betting. Rob's got his gut shot, and he's going to bet at $30. And that'll probably take it down. Button moves over to seat number eight. Small blind, three dollars. Eric B. Hector's in the big blinds, and Art is under the gun. So, like I told everybody on Thursday, I had a really interesting hand with Alan, and that's that's Alan of Alan, and I wrote about it on the uh, my latest Under the Gun blog. I'd love you to check it out. Let me know what you think. And let me know what you think Alan had and what you would do. Go to liveatthebike.com. Click on the left-hand side under the gun. Check it out. James is going to raise up $20 of ace jack. And uh, Ruben calls like it's nothing with queen jack. Man. Scratching himself. And wow, what a flop. I mean, this guy is a friggin' luck bucket. Are you kidding me? Ruben flops straight. And he checks it, and now James has picked up the nut flush draw. And now Ruben's going to put some money in there. And i got to tell you, if you're James here, you can call this. The only problem is you've got to be worried that maybe Ruben is sandbagging a set. You've got to be worried that maybe he's sandbagging a king, or does he have a set of tens or a set of nines. But you know what? I don't mind taking the chance here. Now the pot is about, I want to say the pot's about $100, 40 to call. So you're only getting about two and a half to one on your money, but you got to think implied odds. If you hit your spade, you can put a $100 bet in there. Well, he's not going to take the chance, though. And there, the river was actually the 10 of spades. Well, he actually had to, would have had the best hand, but wouldn't have made any money on it. The 10 of spades, obviously double pairing the board, it would have been kings and tens with a nine. Probably would have gone check, check, who knows. I mean, I never have a problem laying down a, a flush draw or a straight draw when the, when the board is paired, especially in no limit hold'em. Oftentimes in a game like this, when you're not as deep though, you can take a couple of more chances. Now if you're playing a deeper stack game where you've got three, four thousand dollars behind, you know, you don't want to call a $40 raise and then lose $3,000. Talk about reverse implied odds. And I'm not sure if these guys chop or not. Yeah, these guys are going to chop it up. So anyway, okay, so on Thursday night, Boston is to my left. And first about, I get into a big hand with Dimitri, where I, I had to make a big call on him with pocket queens. The board was uh, 9 6 five, all hearts. He bet into me. I called. 
the turn was a 10, an offsuit 10. He bet into me. I raised him up. I had two black queens. And then he moved all in for 3,000 more. And uh, felt like I had a, a somewhat of a read on him. And I made a tough call. And uh, I ended up doubling up off of Demetria in that one. And that was about, I want to say, about an $8,500 pot that I luckily won. We're going to see this four ways now, $20 pot. And look at this. Queen Jack is golden tonight. Look at this. Now, this is one of the reasons why I actually like Queen Jack. Now, obviously, you're not calling to Queen Jack. You can't uh, obviously expect Broadway straight every single time. And there it is, ace-king-10. But one of the reasons I like Queen Jack, especially suited in a raised pot, is oftentimes if you hit your straight here, your opponents have a big piece of that. And when I say a big piece, I mean, hey, your opponent very well might have ace-king and might have trouble getting away from it. And you can win a very big pot. And obviously, in a raised pot against a pretty solid player, and you have queen-jack, you're not just looking for a queen or a jack. Got to be careful not to lose too much money with just one pair. Anyway, so I make a big call against Dimitri, and I double up to about $8,500, which set the stage for another big hand because I had a lot of money. Um, and I'll get to it in a second. I think we're going to do a chip count in a minute or two. Maybe not. Anyway, button moves over to seat number two. And I'll tell my story in a second, or two. Queen seven five, rainbow. Got a queen in seat number four. We also have a queen in seat number five. 15. Queen for Eric. And uh, but look at that. They're all going to check it over to Art. And Art is going to bet his eight ten. Now he's got a, I want to say, just a gut shot. He does not have, actually, does he even have a gut shot? No, he doesn't. He got absolutely nothing. But he's betting anyway. Look at it. For some reason, I thought there was a gut shot there. And Eric's going to call. Actually, Owen's going to call with 6 7. He's got second pair. Raise 60 total. And Eric calls. And now Rob is going to raise this up. Makes it $60 total. With his queen 10. Now, this check raising with the queen, a hand as weak as queen 10, it's, it's, it's somewhat dangerous. Now, it's going to work here. He's got by far the best hand. And if you're Eric V, you got to let go of your queen 6. Um, you got top pair with no kicker at all. And I imagine this is going to be it. Um, and he lays it down. Now, if you're Rob, though, you got to be careful. With a hand as weak as queen 10, do you really want to put that much more money in a pot? And if you get called, well, then where are you at? We've seen it twice tonight, and it's worked both times. Check raising is not always my favorite way to go, though. Oftentimes, I like to bet my hand there. Button moves over to seat number three. And there's a chip count here. We've got about $2,700 on the table. Ruben's got the table covered with $550. rom has got $500. Harold's bringing up the rear with only $100. Let's see how they're doing. Poof. Shazam. There they are. Ruben, up 350. Man, look at that luck bucket. Uh, Rob, 300. James, up 220. Eric V and Harold really having a bad go of it so far. Each down about 300. Wow, he gets a big hand here. We got kings and aces. Uh oh. Look at that. Wow. Now we had a small little raise here, $25. From Queen Jack in seat number seven. Then he got bumped up. Owen bumped up to 100. Then Rob made it 200 out of the big blinds. And now the action is over to Ru Ruben. He's got $175 to call. I think it's an easy lay down. You've got to realize that one of these players has to have an overpair. And he gets rid of his Queen Jack very easily. Uh, and Owen, he is just going to smooth call this. But he's only got 250 left. He's in real bad shape. Yeah, there it is. The flop comes out 10 high. And I just don't know how you get away from it if you're Owen here. I mean, I think it's a pretty basic play. I think you move in if you're Rob. And he does. And and Owen's going to call. And Owen needs a king and a king only. And there's a queen. Not going to do it. And a three of diamonds in the river is not going to do it. And Rob is going to double up just like that. That's a big pot. I mean, these players both had a lot of money. And Owen is probably cursing that he's not playing Limit Hold'em right now. If it was Limit Hold'em, he wouldn't have lost as much. Wow. 
And that's a big, big pot. I mean, I want to say probably close to somewhere in the range of $800 pot. Wow. It's a big pot for a 200 game. And Rob from Australia. Kicking ass and taking numbers. Okay, anyway, so on to the hand. Um, let's see. Dimitri, who is raising almost every other hand, raises it up to $120. Remember, the blinds are 10 20 And uh, I called, Mo called, Joe, Joe Win, or we like to call him Joe Luz, called. Uh, Barry, he called. Anyway, so the pot's about $600. Flop comes out 9 6 3. I had called him the button with 7 8. Um, flop came out 9 6 3 rainbow. So I'm open ended. Uh, Barry had thrown in a blind $200 bet and got called in four spots. Now I'm the button. Now I could have raised it and probably taken it down right there. But I thought I should take a card. And if I hit a big, if, who knows, if I get a five or a ten there, maybe I can really, you know, hit big. Sure enough, the five of spades comes on the river. Now it's second spade. Three players. And we're going to see this three ways. I'm going to let you follow the action while I finish my story. Anyway, so Barry had put in $200. I call, and now the pot is about $1,300. Sure enough, on the turn, the five of spades hits, like I said. I make my straight. Now, there's two spades out there, but I have the absolute nuts right now. Barry puts in $1,500. Dimitri and Mo both fold. And Joe, Joe win, or like I said, Joe lose, calls $1,500. And I'm thinking, what is he calling with? I was really surprised. Now, pretty obvious move for me. Now, I've got about $7,000 left. Now, Joe only had about $3,000 left, and Barry only had about $2,000 left. Eight. So I moved all in. Ace. Art's going to take this down with Ace Jack. So I move all in. Barry immediately calls, and Joe goes in the tank. And Joe ends up calling me. Turns out Barry had a set of fives. I had the nut straight. And I guess Joe picked up a flush draw. I guess. I mean, he didn't have anything else. Anyway, the river pairs the board, brings out a three, and Barry takes the main pot, which is about a $10,000 pot. And, uh, you know, basically in the end, all you can say is, you know, tap table, you say, nice hand, and you, that's poker. Uh, fortunately for me, uh, Barry did not have me covered, and actually did not have Joe covered either, so I made an extra 1400 from Joe. So I ended up only losing about 1500 on the hand. We're going to see this five ways. Limped around. 6-5-5. Five, five. And uh, seat number three, Owen's got a six. He's got the best hand. Let's see if he puts some money in the pot. And he is going to put some money in the pot. A little bet there. That's $30. Time, please. James is thinking about it. I'm not sure why. He's got ace nine here. The ace of diamonds, nine of hearts. Sometimes when I see people thinking about it, sometimes I wonder if they've seen their cards wrong and they think they have the ace of hearts. Anyway, so I was left there. Barry actually ended up leaving right after the hand, and I watched him stack up $10,000 and walk out, which was uh, ever so painful. Uh, I ended up still winning about, I think I won about fourteen or 1500 for the night. But I was left with my uh, my putt in my hand, wondering what could have been. And I got Ronnie sitting here going, a hey, win's a win, yeah. It felt, it felt great. Um, but obviously the game was fabulous. The poker was great. The action was great. You know, and that's what you gotta you got to expect that once in a while. Obviously you're not going to win that all the time. That's funny, it was an interesting hand, but it's not a hand that I necessarily put on my blog because there's not much thinking about it. Generally speaking, okay, what would you do if you had the nuts and everybody moved into? Well, I'd probably move in also. So. And James is going to make it $20 to go with Ace 10 offsuit. Now, I don't mind the raise. The problem with that raise, though, is it's not going to really get anybody out. You're still going to see this four ways. Now you're on the button, but you've got ace-10. It's not really a hand you want to see uh, multi-way. Flop comes out 7-4, deuce. Doesn't really hit anybody. I mean, Eric's got the best hand. He's got to check it, though. And he, does he check around? And James is going to put a little continuation bet out there. 
And if you have sixes, do you get involved here? It's not a bad flop at all for sixes. It's one of those spots where if I have sixes here, I'm often going to bet into my opponent rather than check and let him bet. I don't really want to check raise him. I don't want to put more money in the pot. Now, some people can say, well, Dave, though, if you're always betting that kind of hand, can't they raise you off it? Well, I, also, I would also bet a set of sevens here, too, right into the razor. I would also bet three five of hearts here, or five six. So it really puts my opponents in a tough spot sometimes. If you're always betting, if you're betting your draws, you're betting your, your kind of marginal hands, and you're betting your monsters right into your opponent, it's tough, it's tough for them to figure out where you're at. And you're putting them in a spot where they have to put more money in the pot to find out where you're at. Now, obviously, I don't always bet. You obviously want to mix up your play once in a while. Art's going to make it $15 to go with Big Slick. Get a call from Hector. I'm sorry, get a call from uh, Eric, actually, seat number four. Flop misses both players. 10-10 ten, ten deuce, a couple of clubs. Art's going to make a continuation bet and take it down. Got a couple of posts from 2 plus 2 thinking I should uh, get my wife in help here to help me commentate. I would love to, but she's actually working tonight, unfortunately. People are wondering what Dimitri had on the hand that I called him down. Dimitri actually had 9-8. The board was 9-6-5 with three hearts. And he had 9-8. Neither one was a heart. Uh, one of the reasons now, obviously, yes, it's, a lot of people are saying, well, it was Dimitri. Of course you have to call him. But there are certain ways you know Dimitri plays a hand. Now, Dimitri bet the hand right away, which basically said, okay, he doesn't have a set, and he doesn't have a flush. Okay. I actually thought maybe he has a 9. I actually thought he might, not have, he might even have no pair and just a high heart. Let me get a little little pot sweetener from seat number five. Rob there. He raised it up with East Deuce. Flop has missed everybody. Hector's got the best hand with pocket eights. Six of clubs in the turn changes nothing. Hector's still in the lead. And Art's going to put some money in there. Ace three. And Eric's going to call this with sevens. And that'll probably get Hector out. And Hector folds. And the queen on the river, you know, i got to tell you, if you got sevens here, you probably think you're good. I mean, would Art really check the king there? I mean, I guess he might. He was in, uh, was in early position. And i got to tell you, the only thing you're scared of here is really a, a king. If a guy's got a queen, all the power to you, buddy. And Eric's put to the test here. Now, the pot is about, I want to say the pot's about 140 $130. 50 to call. You're getting about two, two and a half to one on your money. Could this guy be making a move? Could this guy have Jack 10? And generally speaking, people don't make too many moves in this game, but. And he's going to call this. Nice call by Eric. Full house for Eric, and he takes it down. Um, so anyway, I was going to say, so now Dimitri bet $300 right into the pot. Now, I had raised in late position, and uh, Dimitri called in the blind, of course. And uh, he bet right into me, which kind of right away I dismissed the fact that he might have a big hand, because that's not the way he normally plays a big hand. Then on the turn, a 10 came, an offsuit 10, and he bet again. Now, I was a little bit worried, actually. I was a little bit worried that he had 10-9, because that's the kind of hand that he might have called me with. Um, but I certainly didn't think he had a monster. Now, he bet 600 into me. Now, I really thought if he had 10-9, if I raise him there, all he can do is call me. He cannot re-raise re re me, okay? Now, when he re-raises me all in, that kind of confirmed to me that he's probably got pretty much nothing or maybe one pair. Um, 
So I think if he has two pair there, he probably just calls me knowing Dimitri. When he moves in, especially the way he counted his chips, I've been watching Dimitri for quite a while now, obviously on the show, but also I've played with him a bunch. Um, while he was counting his chips, it took about two minutes to think about it. I really had in my mind that I was going to call his all-in bet if he moves all-in. And, uh, sure enough, he did, and I called. We ended up running it three times, and uh, I, I actually beat him all three times. He only had six outs, obviously. He needed to catch a seven or an a s Actually, could have caught a, uh, a seven, an eight, or a nine to win that. So he actually had a couple more outs, I'm sorry, with one card to go. Oh. And we get a limp in on the button here with 5-6. And I like the raise. i got to tell you, if you're Eric B here, I really like the raise. Now, oftentimes, ace-king out of the blinds, it's a tough hand to play. But you know what? When you get a button limp, um, now, I'll, I'll almost never limp on the button with uh, you know, open limp on the button in a limit holding game. Now, in no limit, obviously, you can switch it up depending on who's in the blinds. Um, but i got to tell you, if somebody open limps on the button and I have ace-king out of the blinds, I'm almost definitely going to raise it up, put some pressure on him right away. Get an email from Dave Stanfield. I'll try to get to it. Obviously, I'm doing the play-by-play -play on the color tonight, so do my best. Get a raise here out of uh, seat number two, Art here. He raised it with ace-king suited. Owen's going to smooth call with fives. Ruben's going to call with queen ten. And we're going to see this three ways. Pot is $65. And the flop is 764. got to tell you, if you're not going to hit a set of fives, it's not a bad flop for him. He's open-ended now. And Art is going to bet, and i got to tell you, if Owen would raise this, he'd probably win it. But Owen is just going to call. <laughs> Turn is a nine. That changes nothing. Oftentimes, you can raise with your draws. Now, see, I don't mind raising here with pocket fives. If Art has, let's say Art has ace-king, you're going to get him off the hand. Wow, and now Owen's going to do it. Well, got to tell you, it's a nice play. He wasted the turn to do it. The only question is, in a game like this, sometimes you get your, your opponent is pot committed by this point. But obviously, uh, Art is not going to is not going to call this. He's got East King, no pair, no draw. Nice play by Owen. Waits the turn to make the move. You know, I didn't think Owen had it in him. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of paraphrase David Stanfield's uh, email here, essentially because I'm by myself. He basically says, "How do you deal with super passive players?" And uh, here it is, basically saying that I could not get anybody off the hand, and he's saying super passive calling station type hands. And obviously it is, sometimes it can be difficult because when you're playing against a normal player, a player that you, you think, you'd say, well, this guy would raise if he had this hand. But a super passive player might not raise. He might just be content calling you down. Um, now, if he's calling you down, well, hey, that's great. Basically, the only way you're going to make money in a game like that is that you, you need to hit your hands. Now, if it's a super passive game, I'm really going to want to see a lot of flops in position. And obviously, I'm going to play the players more than the cards in the sense that if anybody ever really shows strength back at me, well, I'm definitely going to get off my hand unless I had the nuts. Flush draw here for Eric B. Eric B has got nothing. He's got ace high. He's missed. And he goes check, check. Wow, surprise there. Eric did not. He's on the button with a flush draw. Why not bet that? I mean, you bet that. You take it away. And now Eric's going to take a shot at it. Seat number nine, that is. He is a favorite. And Eric V just calls. And the turn is, the river's a queen there, and Eric actually gets there. 
to tell you, I mean, heads up there. You have 10-7 suited. The guy checks to you. I mean, I got to tell you, if I'm on a button, and look at this. Eric is actually... Yeah, Eric B. checked in seat number nine. You wonder if he's checking, is he scared, or is he checking to induce a bluff? And I got to tell you, Eric B.'s really played this strangely. You call a raise pre-flop with 10-7 suited. And he's going to make it $125, and, and I'd be really surprised if Eric throws this away in seat number nine. I mean, I'm assuming he checked the river to induce this bluff. You really can't be scared of runner, runner, diamond, can you? I mean, I guess if you're playing against Ruben, you got to be scared against runner, runner, diamond. And sure enough, Eric B. is going to call, and he's going to win himself a big pot. He wins himself a $350 pot. You know, and Eric B. shakes his head because he's like, wow, the guy got there in the river, but you know what? First of all, he didn't need to get there. Second of all, you could have taken this pot away at any time until the river, basically. If Eric B. bets the flop when he gets checked to him, he takes it down. If he raises the turn, he takes it down. Played the hand a little bit too passive. Um... Now, I'm trying to pick this here. Now, I'm a multi-way pot. Now, David Stanfield here on his email is saying his problem was when he got into a multi-way pot and he had a few hands heads up with the passive players that he couldn't get them off any hands. They didn't show any strength, even though I thought I priced them off the hands. How do you deal with super passive players? Now, Eric is going to raise this up with ace-jack. Actually, I'm sorry. Eric B is going to raise it up with queens, and Eric V is going to call with ace-jack suited. And these guys are going to go heads up again. These guys get a room. And Ronnie's uh, made a very astute observation. He said, I bet you Eric wins. Well, there's the king. Let's see if, um, let's see if seat number four, Eric V, can use it. Now, this is one of those times where even if the guy were to move all in on you, you're, I don't think you can fall queens. I'll finish up this with David Stanfield. It's basically, say, how do you deal with calling stations? Man, you got to love calling stations. I'm talking about calling stations like Allen or players like that. Just get hands. And make sure you bet for value, okay? Now, when it comes to the river and you've got somewhat of a marginal hand and you're not sure if you can get paid off or not, bet anyway because you might get paid off. Doyle Brunson used to always say, he goes, man, if you can't beat a passive calling station game, man, that's trouble. I mean, players like that, they can almost turn their hands face up. You just got to remember, though, don't try to bluff somebody that can't be bluffed. Get a nice email here from Jive Dadson. Thank you for the uh, advice, John. Appreciate it. John used to be a DJ back in Atlanta. Gave me some advice on the talking to myself thing. It's nice to know John is still out there. Button is in seat number seven. Hector is under the gun. He's going to limp in. Quick peek around the cards there. Nothing too huge. A couple of aces. A lot of Broadway out there. And uh, I think Hector putting a little, no, no, just limp in there. And uh, seat number four, Eric is going to make it 15 with king 10. He's got, he's in bad shape here, obviously, because there's a player with king jack. There's another player with ace 10. And we're going to see this five ways, $75 pot to the flop. No, I take it back. It's actually six ways, so we got a $90 pot. And there's the flop, king, nine, six. Now, we talk about uh, kicker problems and no limit hold'em. Is Eric V going to get in trouble? Well, actually, king, jack actually laid it down. 
But we got a set of sixes, so he's going to get in trouble anyway. And look at this. I mean, I tell you, Eric is Eric's bitch. I mean, look at this. Three hands in a row, Eric V is just in trouble. He's all in, and he's basically, wow, well, thanks. There's the gift. I mean, he's in terrible shape. I mean, he needs running kings, running tens, a king and a ten. Well, now he's drawing dead. And he got sixes full. He's going to take this down. Eric B is going to win another pot. About a $150 pot. Take it down. Yeah, we get an email here from Adam, and Adam was talking about how he just wonders why the blinds are so big in comparison, especially in these small, restricted buying games, why the blinds are so big. And I'm not sure exactly why. I mean, obviously, I would prefer the blinds to be smaller. In this game, I would prefer the blinds to be, say, 1-2 or, say, 2-2. Two, two. Um, it would really give you a lot of play. Um, I, I guess I can only imagine that the blinds, a little bigger, bigger blinds, entices some action in the sense that you can't just sit there and wait for aces all day. We're going to see this four ways. $20 pot to the flop. Jack, 9-4. Ruben's got the jack. Not much of anything else. Owen's got second pair, queen kicker. And Owen calls this with second pair. Very much of a limit hold'em player. And that's a limit hold'em player move there. And Ruben's going to bet 30 this time, and Owen's going to call again. And this is the great thing. Now, Owen is a perfect, obviously, Owen is super passive, kind of a calling station. Well, he got there. <laughs> what can you do? Um, <laughs> but normally, you know, you bet 15, you bet 30 on the river. I bet $45. Why not? And I'd keep betting with my jack 10, expecting him to pay me off with, say, a 9. Now, obviously, the third heart on the river, plus it being a queen, kind of slowed Ruben down a little bit. Um, now, we're talking about Adam there. One of the reasons I actually like, I mean, I like our 500 game here. I think it's the best one in town. Now, it's a 3 to 500 restricted buying game, but the blinds are only 5-5. Five, five. So if you buy in for 500, you're actually getting 100 times the big blind right away. Really a lot of room to play some poker there. While in this game, obviously, the blinds are still 3 and 5. You're only getting 40 times the big blind right away. We're going to see this five ways, limped around. Actually, yeah, five ways. All clubs. And Hector's got the biggest club. He's got a jack of clubs in his hand. Nobody has a queen. Nobody has a six. Well, there's a four. Best hand right now is actually Owen with ace five, I want to say. Yeah, it is. And there, the queen on the river is not going to change anything. Owen's going to win this if it goes to showdown. He's got queens and fives with an ace kicker. Remember, it's your best five-card hand and hold them. But Harold's going to take a shot at it. Now, this is the question. You've got to start piecing this together, though. What would Harold check in last position? Now, everybody's going to lay this down. Owen's not going to think this through, and he's going to show the bluff. But what would Harold, look at that flop. What would Harold check? Now, remember, the but he, he actually had the button. What would you check on the flop, on the turn, and then bet the river? I don't know. I don't buy it. I'd probably call him down with ace five. Maybe I'd pay him off. Who knows? Anyway, let's move on. Can't believe it. Look at this. Bart is out of the Bart is out of the booth one night. We got two emails from Jive Dadson. Unbelievable. <laughs> Get an email here from uh, Paul. He's an online player, and he watches this play, and he's just shocked at how bad sometimes the no limit hold'em play is. And Paul, all I can say, actually his name is 
Well, I guess it's Paul. All I can say, Paul, is you should watch every night because the play is absolutely astounding. Mind-boggling sometimes. Button moves over to seat number two. A couple of limps. Wow, and, and uh, Owen is not going to complete out of the small blinds. Wow, and we're going to get a raise from Harold out of the big blind. And Eric's going to call this. And look at that set for set of tens for Eric B. And Harold's going to put a continuation bet out there. Now, he does have overcards with a straight draw, plus the ace of clubs. And Eric is not going to slow play. He's going to raise right away. And Harold throws all his money in. And if Eric loses another set, I mean, i got to tell you, he's just snake bit. Well, Harold needs a jack and only a jack. Not going to cup him. There you go. Eric's going to win this with a set of tens. Get a question here from Larry here. Hey, Tuck, do you tip the dealers every time you win a pot? Is it proper etiquette to tip the dealer? Yeah, I mean, it's really, we, we, we like to, it's kind of a sensitive subject, tipping, I always think. It's kind of a personal thing. Same as if you go to a restaurant. You know, obviously the dealers here, just like waiters and waitresses and so forth, they do rely on tips to win, to make their living. Um, how much you tip and when you tip is up to you. Get a new player in seat number four, and that's Gary. Say goodbye to Eric V. You know, I mean, I guess it's the same thing of like, you know, if you go to a restaurant, yes, the waiters are getting paid also. Do they deserve tips? Well, it's kind of expected that waiters and waitresses get tips. And I think it's the same way it is expected that dealers and cocktail waitresses get tips. Masseuses. Kind of the service industry, I think, is always uh, always getting tips. Got a raise here from Art. King 10 offsuit. And Ruben's going to call it eight. We're going to see this heads up. About a $35 pot. Well, there's the king. Now, this is what I was wondering with Ruben's game. Now, he calls a lot pre-flop. Is he going to call post-flop now? And Ruben's going to quickly call. He doesn't even give it a second thought. Now, this is the kind of thing, if you're playing against a player like Ruben here, hey, I'm going to keep value betting with my king-10. Now, that's a, not really a scary card in the sense that if Ruben had king-jack, he already had you beat anyway. The jack doesn't change anything. And Ruben's going to call this. Wow, with eights. He's got two outs to the win, and the turn, the river's a seven, and Art doubles up. I gotta tell you, playing against calling stations, gotta love that. Just don't bluff. Wait for the cards. But like I said, I mean, you wanna see a lot of flops, though, with hands as marginal as, ha say, even a hand like King 10. I'm checking out my blog here. There's a new presentation for it. I like it. Kind of cool. <laughs> we got a raise here from Art. He's got Ace Queen. And uh, I don't know if anybody's going to call this. No, it doesn't look like it. Harold did not get involved. That's a good lay down. King Jack offsuit against a pretty solid player from, from up front. You can pick better spots than that. Once again, we're live at the bike, folks. I'm David Tuckman here with nobody. Um, doing the show solo. Bart is not feeling well tonight. Yeah. I'm sure I'll be back tomorrow or Wednesday at the latest. Uh, we stream live cash games every Monday through Friday from 7 to 10 p.m. Pacific time. If that time is not good for you, though, you can actually, we actually, we show this show on a live loop about an hour after the show ends and then every three hours until about 5 p.m. Pacific time the next day. We also replay the entire week on Sunday. So check it out. And uh, this is going to get limped around. We're going to see it four ways. $20 pot. Well, there's the ace for Gary. 
Not really the flop you're looking with for ace do spades. But uh, he's going to check it. Wow. Turns a queen. Now Hector's got a pair of queens here. And, uh, you know, Eric's going to bet his king jack. He thinks maybe he's good. And Gary's put himself in a tough spot here. He doesn't know where he's at because he didn't put any money in the pot with ace deuce. The river's an eight. And this might go check, check. And it does. Now, oftentimes a hand as weak as ace deuce there. I might put money in there. And I might not put any more money in. But I want to be the better. I don't think the hand's really strong enough to induce a bluff. And the button's going to move over to seat number nine. Seat number two is taking a break. Now he's back. Owen's under the gun. He's not going to play. King, queen, Sudi for uh, Harold in seat number eight. Couple of limpers. And this is, I think, this is a clear raise here. Well... It's not going to raise it up. See, I mean, I think in late position, it's a hand like King, Queen, Sudi. Not only are you raising to limit the field, you're also raising for value. Flop comes out King, 5-5. Five, five. Now, the problem with this hand now is, now, he's got the best hand, but how does he know somebody in the blind doesn't have something like Jack-5? Five? five deuce. You never know. I mean, are you prepared to lose $100 with King, Queen here like that? Now, Rob had limped in in middle position with Jack Deuce off suit. Not a hand you'll see me limping in with in any position. But hey, a lot of different ways to play this game. It's one thing I love about it. Get a chip count here. Got about $3,500 on the table. Eric B. 900. Wow. Rob with 850. I mean, we've got some money on this table now. Uh, Harold and Hector bringing up the rear, only about 100 each. Let's see how they're doing. Rob up $650. Wow. How much is that in uh, Australian money? Uh, Eric B's 400. What is the Australian money anyway? I'm sure somebody has. Somebody email me that. I'm curious. Uh, Harold minus 300. Hector down minus 300. I'm getting word that's about 80 cents to the dollar. Okay. There you go. It's one place I've never been that I'd really like to go. Get a raise here from, a bet here from Harold here. He's in late position, and he bet with bottom pair. And he gets called by Hector with a 10. Now, seat number four, Gary, he's going to call with ace-queen. Now, he's going to hit the queen now. I was going to say, normally I don't mind calling that. He's got a gut, he's got a, a gut shot straight draw to the nut. problem is there's two hearts out there. And he got checked around here, and Gary's actually going to be good with the queen. Now, Hector had the ace of hearts in his hand, and he decided not to bet. Look at that. Harold's going to bet this. And I don't know if anybody can call this. I mean, the queen doesn't really change anything. You can't beat a king. Remember, Harold bet the flop. You can't beat a king. You also can't beat hearts. What do you think Harold has? I mean, the only hand I'm trying to think of, maybe he has that you can still beat. Maybe he was betting an open in the straight draw, and that would be queen jack. But look at that. Gary is going to call with ace queen. And I tell you, a game like this, there's really no point in bluffing, is there? And uh, Gary's going to win it. Takes it down.
Button moves over to seat number two. It's funny, I left on Friday night to go to the Laker game, left bar here alone, and I looked at the lineup like Kirk and Dr. Beebe, and I kind of figured out oh, the game would be pretty slow. And Bart told me the game was absolutely unbelievable, so I went home and I watched the show on Saturday. And I got to tell you, some of those hands, I mean, some of the laydowns Dr. Beebe made, I cannot believe it. You wonder what the guy's playing for. We're going to see this four ways $20 pot. Flop is uh, eight seven three. Rainbow. Everybody misses. <laughs> Turns a jack, and Gary has now picked up a pair of jacks. And he's in commanding lead, and he's got to bet this. And I imagine he'll probably take it down. And uh, he does. Take it down, Mr. Brown. That's it. So I can go. I feel like I've paid for them. No, <laughs> well, you should get another order. <laughs> but there was a, well, that one hand, I can't believe it. What did, I think Dr. Beebe had queen seven, had two pair, and just checked it three times and then folded. Or he bet once. I mean, it was just unbelievable. I think pocket queens for Gary in seat number four. And uh, he's thinking about what to do here. You can almost see it in his head. I think he said raise. And we had a raise from Ruben and a call from Owen. And he's going to make it, I think, 40 to go now. So he went from 15 to 40. It's not a very big raise. Kind of a little pot builder. Ruben's going to call, of course. And uh, Owen's going to call with King-10. And Gary's got to dodge some cards here. Well, the flop comes out 10 high, and you wonder now, wow, look at this, what a flop. Now, Ruben's got Ace-10, Owen with King-10, and Gary's got the overpair. Now, in a big no-limit game, I mean, players have to be aware of the fact this guy is re-raised out of the blind. You've got to realize there's a big chance that one of these guys has an overpair. But look at Ruben. He is... I don't think he's put any thought into it whatsoever. He's calling right away. And can Owen rover call this? No, that's going to save Owen. He's going to throw it away. Turn is a three. That changes nothing. And Ruben is going to need an ace or a ten. There's only one ten left. And Gary's just going to keep putting in value bets out there. First one was 85. Now it's 100. And the pot is quickly 120 to... Three hundred and eighty dollars, hundred to call. Wow. One of those times you got to look at it and go, man, this guy's probably got an overpair. And in this case, Ruben only has four outs to the win. He's one of the three aces left and one of the the, the, the remaining ten to come out there. And he's going to call. And I guess your luck can only go so far. Here's the river. Okay, he called. No need to wait anymore. I always wonder why the dealers do that. I gotta tell you. And here it is. Oh, and the jack is not gonna change anything. It is a third club. It's gotta be a scary card for Gary. And they're gonna check it down. Wow. And that always puts you in a tough spot there. You've got queens. The river's a club there. Now, if you check it, and your opponent is pretty cagey, well, might he bet? Are you supposed to lay that down? Obviously, if you really put the test there, because you're, you're thinking, well, what is this guy calling you? He's just calling me with a 10 the whole time? Remember, he raised and he, co re he called your raise. Hard, it might be hard for you to put him on a 10. Um, you might put him on clubs. It really puts you in a tough spot.
I got a nice suggestion here from Paul over on uh, 2 Plus 2. He says, hey, Tuck, why not get one of those Asian cuties in there with you help, to help you uh, comment, being as your wife has to work right now? And he says, shush, we'll never tell. Nice to see uh, Barry on the on the site. Hey Barry, come on down here. We'll talk to you about your many uh, amazing calls or laydowns. Well, who am I kidding? Amazing calls. That's an interesting shot. Raise the Get a raise here from Art with a weak ace. Ace three. It's not a hand that I, I like to really be in there with at all. Ace three off suit. Problem with a hand like that, especially in no limit hold'em, generally we always talk about hands like that are either uh, you're either going to win a small pot or lose a big one. And we're going to get a re-raise a re from uh, seat number four. Gary's going to make it 75 with pocket jacks. And Art is not going to get involved. And Gary takes it down with Jax. No, not this time. Not the pair, though. I don't know. Got about an hour and 20 minutes left in tonight's show. You can catch us tomorrow night for a uh, no limit, probably three to 500 game. Blinds are 5-5. Five, five. If you want to play in the game, make sure you get here early. Sign up. Wednesday's our big whale game, 25-50 blinds. Minimum buy-in is $3,000. Usually by the end of the game, we have somewhere up near about 100000 on the table. And uh, Thursday night has actually become pot limit night. A lot of fun. And Friday is obviously our big Friday night double fist night. You know Bart won't miss that one. We got ace queen for Gary, and we got a dominated king queen in early position for Harold. And we're going to see the six ways limped around. Gary did not raise... 775 on the flop. Now you can quickly see Gary now. Gary's kind of um, his MO. He raises it with queens, he raises with jacks. Ace queen, he limps in. But now he's going to bet. Now, in this case, it's going to actually work. He's in late position. But we see players like that all the time. They limp in with ace queen, they miss the flop completely, and they bet it anyway. Got a lot of emails in here. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Raise Get a raise here from uh, seat number nine, Eric. He's got uh, he's got jacks also. Can make it twenty five dollars to go. And Gary's gonna call him with sixes. And these both these players are relatively deep. Now, Gary's got position on him as well. If over cards come, might he be able to represent? Well, it's queen 5-5. Five, five. Only one over card to Eric's jacks. But if Gary were to call this or raise this, you wonder if Eric could continue. Wow, and he calls. And that's got to scare you if you're, uh, if you're Eric. You can't beat a queen, you can't beat a 5. Turns an 8. And what does Eric do here? And he's going to put one more bet out there. And Gary's going to call him again. Wow, what is he going to call him down the whole way? I guess you put your opponent on ace king. Rivers of 10, that changes nothing. There's one more hand you can't beat. You can't beat eights down. You can't beat tens either. Well, and you know what? Eric's going to check to Gary, and now Gary's going to take a shot at it. And he bets 125. I don't think he's betting for value, but I think he's betting because he thinks he needs to. I mean, I guess you're specifically trying to get jacks or nines off of the hand. And look at that. Eric folds, and Gary takes it down. Now, obviously, if you're playing no limit, you got to start thinking of hands. If your opponent doesn't have queens, 
and you put them on a pair, well, okay, so maybe you've got tens or nines or eights or sevens. Well, now an eight comes up. That's one more hand you can't beat. Now a ten comes up. Another hand you can't beat. I'm not sure if they're thinking that far in this game, but at least I am. I a nice email here from Tim. He says, hey, guys, can you do a shout-out for the Australian watchers who are logged on to watch Rob? Whole bunch, of, whole bunch of us down under are watching our bo our boy Rob. Well, uh, there you go. Shout out to you and to Rob. Is that what you do? When somebody says shout out, what do you say? You say shout out? You scream? You just shout? Woo hoo! Yeeha! That's right. Get me on a kangaroo. I never quite know. Well, there you go. There's our shout out for you. Uh, well, thanks a lot for the email, Tim. I appreciate it. i got to tell you, I cannot wait to come go down to Australia. My wife's been there a couple of times, and I've never been there. I'm dying. I'm a big scuba diver. I love scuba diving. I'm dying to go down there. Owen bets that uh, flush draw top pair and takes it down. Get an email here from the Pac-Man. Says, hey, because he's talking about the reason for the large blinds. He says, the casino runs these games to allow people to buy in for small amounts, but still allow the pots to be at least twenty to thirty dollars, even on the small ones, so the rake can get the two to three bucks on every hand. And that might be true in Vegas, where the rake is a portion proportion to the pot size. But in LA and California that's actually illegal. Um, the rake has to be a set amount based on how many players are playing. So in a full ring game, the pot the rake is four dollars regardless of the pot. If the pot is four thousand dollars, the rake is still four dollars. If the rake, is, if the pot is only forty dollars, the rake is still four dollars. Hope that helps you out. That's Pac-Man. He's enjoying the show. He's a new listener. Glad you're aboard. Spread the word. I always like to say, if you like the show, tell your friends about it. If you don't like the show, tell your friends about it. Get on and make fun of us. We're gonna see this heads up, small raise out of there. All hearts. Misses both players. This is one of those whoever bets is probably going to take it down. Well, nobody wants to bet. Well, there's a nine, and Gary's made it. Now, you wonder, now, James with a free flop raiser, why not bet that flop? you got to remember, if the board looks scary to you, it probably looks scary to your opponent also. Now, you're not. I wonder if Gary would have taken a shot at this if he hit, had hit his nine or not. But now he's obviously in great shape here. And James has put himself in a spot where, you know, maybe he's, in, he's induced this bluff, but at the same time, he can certainly not call. Certainly can't call here. Anyway, thanks a lot for the email. What else we got? Got an email here from Luke. He had a concern about watching the show on Sunday. Well, we'll get our technical staff on that, okay? Now, unfortunately, if you ever, ever have a problem watching the show, um, you really want to go to the website and click on the button where it says on the left-hand side, click here if you have problems watching the show. Um, calling the Bicycle Casino probably won't get much done because, unfortunately, you go to our welcome desk, and our welcome desk has no idea what's going on. So hopefully, we'll uh, fix that for you. Button's moved over to seat number nine. And we're going to see this four ways, $20 pot. Gary's got eights. Harold with the queen check. King nine nine. Gary's got the best hand here with pocket eights. Now, it's actually not a terrible flop for you with eights because you go, okay, the odds are somebody doesn't have a nine. You're only really worried about the king. It was a limp three on pot, so Gary's going to throw some money in there. And I imagine he's probably going to take it down. And I got an email here from John here. He says, one U.S. dollar equals 1.32288 Australian dollars. Thank you. I appreciate that. The information we get here, I tell you. And it looks like we're getting a special guest into the booth. We're getting the one, the only, Potato. He's known to us as Jay Siegel. On 2 Plus T, he's Jay, he's a Pojato, but to us, he's the Potato.
button has moved over seat one. Oh, we got pocket aces in seat number six. James has got the aces. And look how, look how, uh, how, how interested seat number six was. I don't know if anybody was noticing that, but James had like his head like around like a swivel. Like he was totally watching the entire table. What's going to happen? Now he smooth calls the raise from Rob. Wow, he is really asking for trouble, and he's going to see this five ways. Now the pot is seventy-five dollars. He's got aces. He's got to dodge a lot of cards. Queen, 10, 6, and it looks like he's dodged everything. Luckily for him, his aces are still good. Now, nobody has a queen, so he's probably not going to get in too much trouble. Uh, Rob is going to bet, though. I'm sorry. Actually, Gary's betting with a 10. And Rob's going to throw it away, and I imagine James is going to raise this up now. And he is. And he's going to make it 150. Gary had made it 50 dollars. James makes it 150, and that'll probably get it done. Not the way I not the way I would play aces. I got to tell you. But uh, James has dodged the bullets. You wonder if the flop would come out, say, queen 10 seven. You w you wonder if James is uh, going to go broke there. Probably have to assume he is. Well, here he is. The potato. Judge for yourself, folks. Does he look like a potato? Now, this is actually the award you won last night, huh? Well, he's not on, but we'll get you on. Oh, you're on now. Cool. Wait. That's it. Show it one more time for everybody. This is there the award. Is. Pretty cool. And it says what? Read it, everybody. Stars and Stripes champion. Uh, points playoff. No limit hold'em. The Bicycle Casino, April 30th, 2006. That is awesome. How much money did you win? Yeah. Uh, I got 4200 We did a... We did a seven-way chop. Seven-way chop, okay. Yeah. And you were the chip leader at the time. Yeah, 117 people, 125 buy-in, 4,200 bucks. The bicycle put up 15 grand into the points playoff, so you can't beat that. Yeah, and I got the trophy, which I was really excited about. Okay, now I'm wondering here, and I'm sure our viewers, and I'm sure two plus two, we watch you on the show. We watch you show the, this cash game, and you are like Mr. Tidy, okay? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you play like five pots in three hours. Right. Now, obviously, we always say, it's funny, we always talk about it. We go, you know, Jay's style probably doesn't lend to tournaments. Well, what the hell do I know? Right. I mean, what's the difference? Right. What happens? No, and that's, that's a good point. I've been playing. I learned on tournaments. I've been playing on tournaments uh, for years. And I have no problem, once I throw my money in, as the buy-in. I have no problem. Uh you know, playing very aggressive and throwing it all in there because it's not going to cost me another nickel <laughs> once it's in mean. there. So you've already, and I mean, you've already got the chips. They're like play chips now. Right, right. And I, I have, and it's weird, but I have no, I have no fear okay. of throwing chips in and being aggressive. And and I got the math and the strategy down. It's when I get to the live play, which I just started doing in January. Right, of course. And uh, and boy, it feels like scary right, money, and it. even if it's not a lot, it just feels that way. So I'm making that adjustment now. Look at this here. Eric B. has 8-9 of hearts. He's got a pair and an open-ended straight flush draw. And Art has moved all in. And Eric is so far ahead, it's ridiculous. There's a four. Not going to do it. And there's a queen. Not going to do it. And Eric is going to win this pot. And Art's going to go broke here with just a pair of eights. Wow, huge draw. Didn't get there, but didn't need to get there, huh? And Art had put all his money in, which is Ace King High there. So it's you know the funniest thing is we always talk about it. It's one of the reasons I actually like playing in some players in a cash game because oftentimes in a tournament players can play fearless mm -hmm. because they bought in for a hundred dollars or fifty dollars. They go, well, I've already lost this money. The money's already gone. Now I can really gamble up because I got these chips. But in a cash game, those some those same players do tighten up, start playing with scared money, start getting a little afraid, and a good no limit player can take advantage of that. Right, and right. I'm sure you see that on the other side of it. Right, yeah, and and that's we see the cash players come in on the tournament side, and uh, and I, I got to tell you, like the rebuy tournaments is, you know, all of a sudden you got to pull more money out of your pocket. Right. Um, that and and guess what? I don't like rebuy tournaments. <laughs> well, there you go. Hey, uh, why not? Boy, we got a little pot sweetener here. We had a ten dollar raise. Now, are you still in the tournament now? No, I know you're no, playing. I'm, out. Not. I'm okay. out now. Wow, look at the flop for Gary. He's got king queen. You wonder if Eric B is going to get in trouble. Boy, Eric five. B's got top pair. But only a jack kicker. Now this was a raised pot, and Eric's gonna throw some money out there and see right where he's at. And Gary is going to just call, which is what most players do when they have a big monster. Two players. And 
and there's another queen. Now, you wonder, now that might actually think, okay, well, maybe my king is good, but at this point, though, now you can't be a queen either. And Gary obviously is an overwhelming favorite. Cannot lose the right. hands. Yeah, he's, he can only chop it. He's got one card to chop it. Yeah, a king comes out, they chop it up, and that's it. So this is what we do. Now, you go out there and you're winning thousands of dollars while you're playing poker and playing tournaments. We sit here and we talk about it. Yeah, right, this is end. great, though. This is like Willy Wonka. I'm pretty a, cool setup. I'm at the chocolate factory right now. Well, here's a 2 plus 2 form that we watch every night. Right. Well, we, we kind of have, you know, we have a nice relationship, and Gary's going to raise this. More. And uh, if you're Eric, I think it's time to realize, well, I can't really beat a king. I mean, I, I mean, would Gary be making this move with a hand as weak as King 10? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Um, I can't beat Ace King. If by chance he's making the move with Ace King, but let's be honest, he's probably making this move with a queen. More often than not, in this game, it's straightforward play. Right. The right. guy raises, he's got it. Yeah, and yeah, and, sure and enough, Eric lays it down. Yeah, Eric lays it down. Now the best way to play to me, if the best way to play that of hand, if you're Gary, you make a nice pot-sized bet right in the flop, you get called. The turns comes a queen. Make it on a pot size, but just keep bleeding them dry where you keep building the pot. You bet 40, then you bet 60, then you bet 80, and you might get called three times. Right, right. By check raising, you're kind of let your opponent off the hook. Yeah, and that's one of the things I've picked up uh, from you guys is just that you know, bet straightforward, build up the pot, and uh, don't end up trying to be tricky and building yourself a trap and falling yeah. in. Well, to me, the, I mean, the, one of the reasons I don't like check raising too much, I mean, obviously it's got to be part of your game, but one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of it is if you're going to check raise your big hands, well, then you have to check raise your bluffs as well. We got pocket queens and seat number four on the button. Um, and if you're check raising your bluffs as well, well, then you're committing an awful lot of chips on your bluffs. Now, I'd rather bet out on my bluffs. I'd also rather bet out on my made hands. And that way, yeah, right, that way they don't know. They don't know where I'm at. Yeah. And I'm not committing that many chips to my bluff. Now we're going to see this heads up. We had about a $30 raise from Gary, and Owen called. And uh, Owen's miss. He does have a gut shot to a straight card. Gets a five here for a straight. Flop is seven, six, four, two clubs. He's going to check. Gary's going to make a $50 bet. And Owen's going to call. Wow. How are you With calling? With a gut shot out of position. Wow. Man, I tell you. Amazing. Jack on the turn. Owen's going to check again. And now he's going to get rid of it, I'm sure. And you got to love those kind of players that take one off. You know? Yeah. Just don't bemoan your bad luck when the five comes next time. Because once in a while it will come. But, you know, obviously he's not getting the odds to call for that. Right. Right. Um, and so Gary is, shows him. Yeah, this is great, man. I am so psyched for you. I got to tell you, yeah. oh, this, uh, this was real exciting winning yeah. the troll. I mean, I kind of feel like you're one of ours, you know. <laughs> Anytime we can kind of, I mean, that's just awesome. We got Marlo in seat number two, new player. So I'm curious now. Bart claimed he was sick. Okay. Now we're trying to figure out where he really is. We're thinking. I'm thinking he's getting late. <laughs> Well, I got to tell you, that would be my first choice to. Uh, to that would be your that. first choice, sitting. Thirty-five. Yeah, to sitting in the booth here with you, right? Uh, yeah, I, I think I'd rather be getting laid too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Eric's got aces. Owen's gonna yeah, call the raise. Now, this is this is interesting. No limit game. A guy raises an early position, and you're going to call with King with Jack. With your trap hand, King Jack. Yeah. Hand. Now, I don't mind, once you overcall, the, a guy overcalling in seat number four with five free suited, that's a different kind of hand. And now look at the flop. Ace, nine, eight. I got to tell you, even with a set of aces here, I bet it. Sure. What do you want to do? You want to leave somebody in there with King, ten, and let a jack come off? Queen, ten, I mean? I think I just let that happen in the tournament. Yeah, you just, you know, you got to bet it. You, you have to hope that you... You figure your opponents have nothing, but you never know. Maybe they make a move on you. Maybe they think you're full of crap. Anyways, this is absolutely awesome. I got to tell you. That's my first trophy. I really, you know, I, 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 you really put it in my face, too, because it was funny. Watching you play, I would never imagine you were a tournament player. Now, what got you in the points playoff? Uh, I placed in two, two events. Uh, 12th place in a no limit hold'em, one optional rebuy, 200, okay. 200 entry, and then uh, a no limit hold'em uh, headhunter, 225 on Friday. 
On Friday, okay. Yeah. So I got 28 points, which is kind of a, you know, it's an average number of points, nothing outstanding. Uh, but enough to get you in there. Yeah, enough to get me in there, and I got the right, I got, I got the right hands at the right time, and I also I made one major Replay. suck out, which you need to do one, two, three times in a tournament. Yeah, you gotta get lucky. I mean, and you gotta uh, win those races. You gotta get lucky yeah. once or twice. And I I stole a lot of blinds, which is another big difference in yeah. the cash game. How about the slop tens there? James has got a uh, full house on the button. Great. And I, I like the bet here. He's got to put his money in there. And I, I don't think, and it's actually Morrow 40. in seat number two, not Marlowe. Yeah, I don't imagine anybody's going to call. No, nobody's going to call this at all. So are you going to play tomorrow night, 3 to 5 game? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm... Uh, my wife is out of town right now, so I'm trying to... Uh, work on some satellites at a different casino. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't say it. You're killing me, Jay. I took enough money out of this one this week. I think I'll Man. have to go tap another one out. Oh, I see. Okay. Are you superstitious like that? You think no, there's only a certain amount of money in certain casinos for no, you? No, and that's that's one of the things I talk about a lot is you know, I, I believe in math, and I, I don't believe in luck. Uh, I believe luck can describe certain things, but I don't believe in it. Uh, but it does pay to get lucky. Absolutely, absolutely. When right. skill runs out, you got to rely on luck. Yeah, why not? Why not? I Martin think one of, the co one of the quotes I've said from you is, uh, it's not the seat that's unlucky, it's the ass that's in it. The ass in it, right. There you go. Um, hey, luck, I'll always take luck. Yeah, and you need it. And, and you end up, you have to get lucky a couple times in a tournament. Of course. King, 10, 8, couple of diamonds out there. And uh, Hector, wow, big flop for Hector. He's got a pair with the flush draw, Jack Tennis Diamonds. And he put money out there and a string for a string bet. <laughs> Supposedly it was a string bet, so he figured why not throw out my string. And obviously a string bet, for those of you who don't know, is... Um, when you're putting out a raise in a cash game, or actually, in a game, you've really got to either announce the raise or put it out in one, in one fluid motion. Um, now, in a cash game, you actually can go back to your stack, but it's really got to be kind of quick. They do allow that in a cash game. And it turns an eight, and is Gary still? Wow, and Gary's in there with the eight, and he's going to, he makes trips there. Wow. Now, Hector still has an out. And he's a ten or a diamond, but it can't be the three of diamonds. And now Gary's going to raise this up. Now, it's funny when they talk about string bets now. In a, in a tournament, you actually have to put all the money out in one fluid motion or announce the raise amount and then put it out there. Right. But in the cash game, now the diamond comes in the river. It's the ace of diamonds, and Hector's going to make it. And it's time to uh, value bet if you're Hector. But, wow, he checks it, and he's going to look the check raise, I assume. I mean, it is a poor... Uh, it, it's a paired board. It is. But. I mean, it's a real strange... I mean, I was surprised that he checked this. The Ace of Diamonds is like the ultimate scare card if your opponent was betting a king the whole way, you know? Right, right. You couldn't expect... it. Also, a third diamond. You can't expect Gary to bet this. And he just calls this, and he's going to win this with Jack Ten of Diamonds. And i got to tell you, that's a hand I'm going to bet right now. Yeah, I would have bet into it and yeah. not had to react. You got to realize, I mean, Gary, I kind of, I think he kind of made a mistake there with trip eights. Now, I'm always an advocate for value betting, but you look at that turn, then the river comes ace of diamonds, and you wonder, what was my opponent calling me with? Now, if he was calling me with queen jack, he got there. If he was calling me with diamonds, he got there. Not much I can beat anymore. <laughs> um, back to that string raise. Uh, oh. You know, people watch movies, and the, the classic thing in a movie is, I call, I call this 50, and I raise you this. Right. And... You know, it, ha it happens all over in home games, and uh, everybody's just used to that. That hasn't yeah. played in a poker, uh, in a, a casino environment. Now the funny thing is, in a tournament, you cannot do a string raise, but in a cash game, I'm going to actually step on Brian's toes there. Now I, I wasn't exactly watching what Gary had done in seat number four, but you are actually allowed to go back and forth to your stack in a cash game. More than one time. Yes. In a cash no limit game, because of the amount of stacks, they just assume there's too many chips there to do it all in one motion. Oh, I see, I see. Um, but if you start making plays at it, well, then the yeah, casino. start abusing it. And the casino, yeah, the foreman will uh, call you on it. Eric's gonna bet this, and he takes it down. Now, just to avoid the problem, because you never know what floorman's on and what floorman might, what he might rule. 
as far as I'm concerned, oftentimes if I'm going to raise, I will announce a raise, I will think about it, I'll count out my chips, and then I'll put it out there in one motion. Right. And, and what I tell people who are just starting off or are a little bit nervous in the game is that announce the raise and then figure out how many you're going to raise and say that number. That way when you fumble the chips and you're nervous and all that, you don't end up doing too little or too much, you know how much you want to raise. And, you, you know, you may give a little bit of a tell in the inflection of your voice, but, uh, you know, that, at least you'll get the right amount out there. Yeah, no, definitely. It's a good, it's good advice. Get a little post here on 2 plus 2 from uh, Barry Woods. He says, hey, Poe Jato, good job once again. You're my idol. Can I have your baby? I, I Is there something going on between no. you and Barry no, that I don't know about? No, there isn't. Uh, but There's nothing wrong with that, man. It's 2006. <laughs> it's okay. Come out and say it. This is, a, this is as good a form as any. No, I, you know, I'm one of Barry's uh, big fans, and it's nice to see that he's a fan of me now. And, uh, <laughs> and I hear that uh, a baby from Pajato could be just a little spud. <laughs> good one, Ronnie. That's a hard one. There you go, man. Well, hey, I want to congratulate you once again. World Series now? I am going to the World Series. I'm going to play a couple events. I, I actually I won a tournament at the World Series, but it was the small Twilight tournament okay. last year. But this year, how about a bracelet? I, I, I see it. Okay. I, I can I'll let see you, the, I'll I let you wear it. it, man. I can see it. Okay, well, cool. Thank you, Dave. Thank I appreciate you. the time. Have a good one. one two. And that was Jay Siegel, the potato, Poe Jato on 2 Plus 2, winner of uh, the final Poker Stars event, the all around event. And uh, walking home with a nice trophy. Really nice trophy. I gotta tell you. Congratulations, man. God, it really uh, it breaks me up inside. You know, Jay's kind of like our kid, you know? Almost like a little baby. Grown up, all grown up, winning tournaments now. Uh, getting all misty out here. Button moves over to seat number two. And I got another email here from Tim. He says, hey, the money in Australia is also called the dollar, and it's getting stronger by the minute as Rob keeps dragging the pots home. You must be, man. I want to thank Mark also for the email. Three players. I know, what is Eric Steen there besides behind seat nine? Jeez. Like a flop of uh, Jack, eight seven, couple of spades out there. Eric's got the best hand here with uh, King seven. Look like Owen actually bet it though. No, actually, I'm sorry. Eric did bet it. Eric bet it in seat nine. Owen called with Ace ten. Man, I gotta tell you, that's a weird call. Ace ten. I mean, the board is Jack eight seven. What are you hoping to hit? I guess a nine. I mean, call him with your gut shot. Two spades out there. The nine of spades comes out. What do you, how do you even know if you're good? Well, another six of spades comes out, and Gary's going to put money in there. 95. He's going to try to represent spades, and I don't think anybody can call this. Nice bet by Gary. He's going to take it down. And I got an email here from Dave Stanfield. Dave, I just thought of something. Tuck, you guys says you you guys said that you, we, you could you could Skype us, right? And yes, of course you can Skype us. Go to Skype.com and Skype us at I think it's live at the bike. Um, he said for these solo nights like this, you guys could take some live calls. <laughs> Check it out. Well, thanks, Dave. Another email here from Adam. Thank you. <laughs> Five players. That's ten. Race is twenty five. We got a race here from Rob here. Rob's got top two pair, Queen Five. And he's going to raise Gary. Now, Gary had bet with pretty much nothing. He had bottom pair. Three players. Wow, and Gary calls an O and over call with 6 7 of spades. He had a gut shot with a backdoor spade draw. And they both check it. And Rob is going to. Checks behind them. And the river is a 6. 
And that changes nothing. I can't believe Rob actually checked a turn. 70. Look at this. And now Gary's going to bet. He can't help himself. And I think if you're Rob here, use the powers of Australia and call. I don't think he can raise this anymore, but he certainly can call. He's going to call, and Gary's going to show a pair of threes. And you wonder what the table is going to think when they see that. Now, he bet the pair of threes, which is one thing, but then he called the raise, and then he bet out again on it. Get an email here from Barry Woods. Actually says, email is from Barry. What the fuck are you calling that hand with Woods? Small one, big one. And uh, apparently Barry will not be here this week. Are you kidding me? What are we going to do without Barry Woods this week? I guess he's going out of town. That's a shame. Oh, by the way, Barry, my... Uh, Wife has been busy in the closet, but she's good for May 11th, I think, and May 30th, I think you said? I think that's it. I'll have her call you, though. Live at the bike, politically incorrect, keeping it real. i got to tell you, May 1st, my favorite Mexican restaurant was closed today. I was furious. I was so upset. Well, not furious. Furious is really overstating it. Got a raise here, thirty dollars from uh, James, with pocket deuces out of the big blind. Kind of an odd flight. And uh, is Gary going to call eight three suited? Hey, any two cards, huh? Wow. No, he's not going to call an eight three suited. And uh, you imagine Rob is going to lay down king nine off. Now I'd rather actually call it like three four suited than king nine off suit. He's not going to call. And we're going to see this heads up now between James and Harold. And there's a set of deuces. Wow. How do you know? It's amazing. Okay. Turns a six. Harold makes a pair. And now James is going to put some money out there. And Harold moves all in for $7. And this pot is about $80. And Harold's drawing dead. Wow, quad deuces for James. Talk about overkill. Yeah, that's probably good for at least half the pot. And Harold throws his card in there and he says, you know what? Screw this no limit hold them garbage. Where's my limit game? Damn it. Blinds, please. I need chips, please. See that. And I get a negative email here from David McQueen that I will read here. Who in their right mind left Dave alone to mine the store? You couldn't get Nicole or Shirley to come by and save us all? I've heard more about the great plays Dave has made and less about this game. I can see that 3-5 no limit bores the crap out of Dave. It actually doesn't. I actually like this game. But anyway. And unlike Bart, doesn't seem to be able to at least fake an interest. When is Bart back? Well, I'm not sure when Bart is back. I'll probably tomorrow night. At the latest, probably Wednesday. Do appreciate the email, though. Thank you very much. Jack 10 9, rainbow board up there. A couple of open in the straight draws. Rob has got a queen. James has got a queen. Wow, and Gary's got the bottom end of the straight. He's made a straight already. He's got 7 8. And uh, it checks around to Gary, and he's going to bet this. Certainly don't want to give a free card there. A lot of reasons not to give a free card here. Obviously, a lot of cards can kill your hand. At the same time, they can also kill your action. Let's say a queen comes out here. Well, first of all, Rubu next up a straight. But let's say nobody had a king and a queen came out anyway. You were still good. You probably wouldn't get much action. And there's a seven, and that's actually one of the kind of like action killers. Oftentimes we always say if you want to win a big pot, you've got to build it yourself. And Gary's going to make it a $75 bet into about an $80 pot. The pot is now about $160. $75 to call. And uh, Adam is using the powers that be to find out what to do. All right, James. That is James with the queen. 
Now, the problem with a queen here, you've got to realize, okay, if an eight comes, man, I, I guess maybe you get paid by somebody who thinks to chop pot. And if a king comes, you, I mean, are, there, are the implied odds there, really? And he's asking the, uh, what is that, the little metal egg? Oh, what did the metal, what did the, what did the golden egg say to do? Well, the old golden egg said call. And the turn is a four, and look at that, James makes a pair of fours. What are you talking about? Faking interest. That's interesting. He's got a pair of fours. Are you kidding me? Huh? Gary wins yeah. it down. He takes down about a $215 pot. Lines, Nobody's, Nobody's commenting on my little uh, piece here. They usually ask me if I'm a longhorn. Do appreciate the emails. Keep them coming. Live at thebike.com. Really do appreciate it. Anything positive, negative. My confidence is a little bit hurt now, so if anybody wants to call in and if you want to email me and let me know I'm doing a great job, I'd appreciate it. Got a chip count coming in a second. And there it is. Almost 4000 on the table. That's a lot of money for a 200 all game. Gary with 850, Rob with 800, Eric with 750, all doing pretty well. Harold already lost a buy-in and he's 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 got a short buy for $100. I got to tell you the blinds at 35, you rarely see me do a short buy in a game like this. Let's see how they're doing. And uh, you know, there they are. Gary up 650, and that's pretty good. I mean, you've got to realize that he's only bought in for 200, and he's up 650. Real impressive. Rob up 600. Harold already down two buy-ins, down $400. Now, this is a guy who normally plays a 612 of the 816 games. That's a, that's a lot of money. I mean, that's that's actually two buy-ins in that game there as well. Owen down 340, and you see the two players that normally play limit hold them not faring very well in no limit hold them. Let's get back to the action. <laughs> what happened to points in the chips? Would that man go? <laughs> and this is about a hundred dollar pot. Now this is actually going to get chopped up. Both players have aces and sevens with a king kicker. It's your best five cards. Gary got lucky with the king on the turn. And uh, and James puts out a really small bet there. And he's going to get called by Gary, and they're going to chop this up. It's one of those times where it's a lot more exciting for them on the table than us. Obviously, we know it's a chop pot. Now, sometimes if you know it's going to be a chop pot, oftentimes you can overbet the pot, try to get somebody off of a chop pot. And obviously, you've got to be wary that if you can only chop the pot at best, you don't always want to be calling a huge bet. You've got to realize that. Let's say the pot's $100. Guy overbets the pot by putting like a $300 bet on the river. And you're thinking, well, all I can do is chop it. Well, now you're putting in $300 to win 50 Remember, you're not going to win the 100 because the pot's 100 You can only win half that. So now you're putting in 300 to win 50 You've got to start thinking, well, is it worth it or not? Gary's got tens, and he's going to make a little raise here. He makes it two. $30, actually $40 to go. Now, Harold's got East Queen out of position. Tough hand to play and no limit holds him out of position. And the problem with this hand here is he's only got $100. I mean, why not just move all in with Ace Queen then? What are you going to do, check and fold now? I mean, he's put 40% of his stack in on this hand. Out of position. I mean, when the flop misses him, he's just going to lay it down. Now, Mara obviously throws the 8-3 away. And there's the flop, and it's missed Harold. And is he going to check and fold when Gary bets? And Harold moves all in with the ace queen. I mean, I guess if you're going to do it anyway, why not just do it pre flop? What's the, what's the point of waiting? And uh, Gary's good here. He's got to catch an ace or a queen, Harold, or he's going to lose. And there's the queen. Look at that. And Harold wins it. Now, I don't mind Harold moving all in there, but why not just do it free flop? Now you've seen the flop. You've missed it completely, and now you're going to put in
Get a limpers around here. Goes to Gary, and Gary's gonna limp in with Ace Queen. And once again, Gary's raising with his pairs, limping in with his big, uh, big aces and big Broadway cards. Wow, what a flop! Eight, nine, ten of clubs. And uh, Eric B has flopped the flush. He's got the king high flush, but he is not out of the woods yet because Gary has the king of clubs in his hand. He can catch a jack of clubs and a jack of clubs only to win this hand. Now James has two pair. And we talk about playing it fast, and right away, Eric bets right into the board, and you got to love that. I love the bet. Love that bet. It's one of those things where most people will not give you credit for the flush because you bet right away. And now Gary has bet, and James might raise this with 8-9. Harold's got nothing at all. He's got an open-ended straight chart at the 7, but no spade. And James is just going to call this. Now, James needs an 8 or a 9. Gary needs the jack of clubs and the jack of clubs only. And there's a jack. Now, Gary has made a straight. Is he going to get in trouble? Now, that might get James off the hook. It is a one-liner to a straight. 8, 9, 10 jack out there. Three clubs. And if you're Eric, I think you got to bet one more time. Put a nice little $40 bet out there. You know your hand is good. You don't want to price your players out. And he is going to bet 125 into this pot. Wow. And that's a, I, I mean, that's a little bit of a big bet, I think. Uh, pot's about 85. I mean, you almost want to price your opponents in. And look at this. You know what? He gets both players to lay it down. And I, I thought he overbet the pot just a little bit. And the river was a 10 of hearts. Doesn't change anything. I thought he overbet that turn. Now, obviously, I'm not an advocate for slow playing, but I really want to price my opponents in there. Um, now, some people can say, well, wait a second, what if the guy had the ace of clubs? Okay, well, sometimes I don't mind. If he, if he has the ace of clubs, he's going to call me anyway. And I, don't, I really don't mind him calling. He's not getting the right odds to call. Yeah, there's always, a, always many different ways to play a hand of poker. It's one of the reasons I love the game. You can sit and debate with your friends and your adversaries about the right way to play a hand. Until the cows come yeah. home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get an email here from Naka. Actually, what's his name? Let me see this. Eric, actually, from Montreal, Quebec. And uh, if I get a chance, I will answer that. I might actually just email you back. It's kind of a question we can't really get to on the show. Great plus, boy. I was waiting for that one. I hit a straight plus the other day on the way here, actually. Got a high hand. Flop is king, ten, deuce. Couple of hearts out there. And uh, Eric's got two pair, top two. Man, two flops in a row, he hits monsters. Now, this is one of those flops. Now, I know it's it's of small circumstance, but if you're Eric, you also have the ten of hearts in your hand. Now, if somebody has a heart draw, it's just one less heart they can get. And uh, nobody's going to call. I, I like the bet anyway. I really do. Some people are going to say, well, why not slow play it? Get some action out of it. Well, can't always get action. There are some hands, obviously, for you to win a big pot and no limit, you've either got to give somebody the opportunity to make a move on you, you've got to catch somebody bluffing, or you've got to have a big hand against somebody else's big second best hand. More often than not, in this game especially, and in most games, but especially in this game, it is correct just to bet your hand, put money in the pot. Chris Robinson? Yeah. Yeah, he's not a No, no, I'm saying, is it the whole band or is it just him? Oh, no, it's the whole band. The Black Crows. The place holds about 3,000 people outdoor. Chris Robinson. Yeah, I've seen his options. Solo. Button moves over to seat number nine. Seat number one, sorry. Wow, I just pulled the Bart there. And we're going to see this uh, five ways. Actually, six ways. You got pocket fives and seat. And look at this. Three flops in a row. Eric B. He flops a flush, then he flops top two pair, and now he's got a set of fives. Now, Hector has queen seven, and is Hector going to bet here or at least call a bet from Eric? And Eric's going to put a little bet out there. And Hector's going to call with a hand like queen seven. And if he catches a seven or a queen, he can get himself in a lot of trouble. And this is going to be heads up now. The pot is now $60, $70, actually. 
And the turn is a six. And uh, Eric cannot lose the pot unless he folds. And he's going to put out a little bet here. He's going to put out kind of a $60 bet this time. And if you're Hector, it's one less card now. Suddenly, if the guy has 7 6 or 6 5, you can't beat that either. Let's try to think of hands you could have there. You could have 6 8, could have 6 4 for an open ended straight draw. But either way, Hector's going to call this. And this pot is quickly $210. And the river is a deuce, and Eric fills up. And I think it's time to value bet here. Pot is 210, maybe you put out a nice $140 bet. What? 30? How do you bet 30? Why 30? I mean, that's a bet that makes no sense, though. I just don't understand that. $30. I mean, some people can say, well, you got the call, but I got to tell you. I mean, when the guy calls my tough $60 bet on the river, on the turn, and the pot is now $210, I got to tell you, I'm going to put the guy to test a little bit more. I'm going to make it at least $100. If the guy doesn't call me, well, so be it. There is value to not showing your cards. Man. Got an email here from Adam Wagoner. He, his, um, his theory is that the guy who actually emailed the negative... Uh, the negative email was actually Bart. <laughs> well, thanks, Adam. <laughs> Got an email here from uh, Chris in Wisconsin. He says, hey, Dave, good job tonight. Apparently, Fox News just reported that someone was arrested outside professional poker player Liz Liu's house tonight for, for stalking. The perpetrator is described as a white male with glasses who was shouting, Are you kidding me? As he was hauled away in handcuffs. Thanks a lot, Chris. <laughs> Classic. Buttons over in seat number three. That's Owen. Small blind is Gary, $3. Big blind is, is uh, Rob. Australian Rob and James is under the gun. He's not going to play. A limp from Ruben, a limp from Harold. And Harold, is, by the way, has done another short buy. And I got to tell you, in a game like this, I just don't understand why you'd want to buy in for 20 times the big blinds. Ends up, it ends up basically committing you to one hand. You have ace king, ace queen. Okay, I'm all in. I mean, if I made the analogy that this table was some like, it's like playing a, a poker tournament in the sense that you don't get that many chips in relation to the big blinds, well, Harold's almost like playing it like a, I mean, he's almost playing it like a late in the tournament where he's got to move in or fold. Now, we had a raise here from seat number nine. Eric's going to raise it with seven. So I guess the way he's running, he figures another set. And Ruben and Harold are both going to call, and the pot is quickly $70. Flop comes out nine five three. Nice flop for sevens. And they'll both check to him, and I imagine Eric's going to put in a nice continuation bet. And sure enough, he is. And you got to like Eric's game in the sense that he's betting his sets, he's betting his flush, he's also betting his sevens here, even though he doesn't have anything. And he's going to take it down. And Eric's on fire. And uh, Barry Woods, of course, on the 2 plus 2 post, we were talking about why, where Bart is. And, you know, I, I, I figured Bart was actually getting laid tonight. And Barry said, well, Bart's not back till Wednesday? It's going to take him that long to get laid? How pathetic. That's 20. I got my lucky cards, Brian. Oh, my lucky cards. We got a kind of a mini raise out of uh, Moro. He had ace, nine, offsuit. Owen's going to call with eights. Flop comes out, king, 7-7. Seven, seven. couple of spades out there. And uh, Morrow's going to check it. Actually, I'm sorry. That was actually uh, Ruben who checked it. And Morrow's going to put a continuation bet out there. And he's going to take it down. 
Owen playing those eight somewhat passively. Doesn't call there. It's funny, some of the hands that Owen calls with. We saw earlier I'm calling with like a hand like ace 10 in a situation like this. Well, here at eight, it's only one over card, really. He just assumes his opponent hasn't First beaten, he throws it away. Get an uh, emailed question. Actually, it's not an email question. It's on 2 plus 2. Barry Wood says, hey, is it harder in your opinion to go from limit to no limit or from no limit to limit? Man, and there's a, there's a huge transition either way. Um, let me think about that for a second. I'll get to you. And uh, Rob is going to make it $20. He's got big slick. Ace king, off suit. Ace of spades, king of diamonds. He makes it $20 to go. And James is going to re-raise this with jacks. And he makes it 70 to go. Wow. Now, against a real solid player, oftentimes I'll just throw away ace king out of position. Because I figure if I hit my ace or my king, I'm not going to be getting any money out of them anyway. Um, and I'm also only going to see three cards. Some people will say ace, king, versus jacks. Well, it's a coin flip, but only if you see all five cards. Obviously, it'll be very difficult. Now, normally, against a good player, if an ace or a king were to come out here, James shouldn't really lose any money. But you wonder, sometimes at this level, though, you can make, you can make this call, though. Does put you in a tough spot though. Your ace king out of position. And he's just going to call this. He's going to see the flop. And the flop misses him. It comes out eight high. And this is what I'm talking about. Now Rob is most definitely going to check it. Actually, I'm sorry. James is actually first to act. And he's going to put in $100. And Rob throws the hand away, and, and I, you know what, I didn't correctly actually, for a second I thought the button was in seat four. And uh, obviously the show is live, unedited, unscripted. But I actually thought Rob was out of position there. Now in position with ace-king, I think you can call. Because oftentimes, even if a king or an ace come, your opponent will put a continuation bet out there. Now it's, it's funny, now is it harder? To go from limit to no limit or from no limit to limit. Man, I tell you, it's such a huge transition. Now, I really went from limit to no limit. And I'll tell you, it's probably harder. I think it's probably harder to go from no limit to limit. Because going from limit to no limit, the game changes. Uh, you know, it's really like apples and oranges. Two different games, limit hold them and no limit hold them. But I would imagine if you go from no limit to limit, you're going to be playing far too many hands, and it might get really, really frustrating for you, kind of being caged in by those limits. And Owen's going to raise it up with ace-queen and gets called by Morrow, and we're going to see this heads up. King four spades versus ace-queen. Well, there's the king four. Look at Morrow. He's hit top and bottom. Owen's got ace-queen. Now, this is a hand against, against Owen. You can actually bet $20, $30, and then $40 and get paid off the entire time. And Owen calls. And there's a six of hearts. Now, Owen has the ace of hearts in his hand. And Morrow is going to check it to him, and he's induced this bluff, actually. Now, Owen might not be thinking he's bluffing, actually. Owen might think, and Owen's going to call, and Morrow's going to call this. And Owen needs a queen, an ace, or a heart. He's got a lot of outs. And the river is a six, and it changes nothing. It does kill Morrow's two pair, in the sense that he has kings and sixes with a queen kicker now. If Owen had, say, ace king there, obviously uh, kings and sixes with an ace kicker would have been better than kings and sixes with a queen. Queen kicker. But Morrow is going to take all of Owen's money, and look at this, the limit boys are getting killed. I mean, i got to tell you, either way it is tough. You know, it really is a different game. You've got to realize that when you are playing limit holds and exclusively and you jump into a no-limit game, you've got to realize that you've got to play the game differently, and vice versa. You can't expect to play no-limit, and then suddenly, you know, I, I don't know if Barry Woods, obviously, I don't know if you're thinking about playing limit hold'em, um, 
But I got to tell you, you really, really got to tighten up if you're going to play limit hold'em. I mean, it's come from my experience that I don't think, especially in this casino and in a lot of casinos, when you're playing, say, 40, 80 and below, and even 80, 160, I noticed that you could not play tight enough free flop. Now, obviously, once you're in the hand, you can play differently. You can play it aggressively. Tight aggressive is the way to take the money home. But there we go. Flop a 10, 8, 4. It was limped around seven ways. Look at Ronnie, man. Getting those cards down. I tell you. And uh, we got a couple of players with eights. Uh, seat number four, Gary is gonna is gonna bet actually with an ace deuce. He's got absolutely nothing, no pair, no draw. Now James is gonna call this bet. He's got king five. He's got a diamond draw. And Owen is gonna call with nine six. He's got a gut shot, and he hits his gut shot. But it's a seven of diamonds. Now James has got his. Wow. Now Owen makes the straight, but James has got the flush, and Owen is drawing dead. And he puts all his money in the pot, and James is going to win the pot. Oh, I tell you, man, you go for a gut shot with a two flush out there. What do you expect? The straight is no good. And he puts his hands up there in frustration, and he's going to watch the show. And I know that Owen is is, is almost primarily a limit hold'em player, but you've got to realize that in no limit, even in limit hold'em, going for a gut shot straight draw with a two flush out there. I mean, just even if you're going for the gut shot without the two flush, it's tough. But here you got to think, okay, well, I've got four outs and one of them is not even clean. If seven of diamonds comes, I'm dead. Button moves over to seat number eight. He's going to raise it up. Put a little pot sweetener in there with king queen. Makes it fifteen dollars. Four players. <laughs> Ten deuce deuce. Rob's got top pair. Imagine he's going to put some money in there. Bet forty. Wow. Well, he's not going to get a chance though, because Morrow is going to bet. Forty dollars with king three. He's got absolutely nothing. He's got a backdoor spade draw. No pair, no draw. And Rob's really got to think about this. I mean, he really can't beat a big ten, and he can't beat a deuce. And he's going to lay it down. I don't mind the lay down at all. I mean, it's hard to put a player on a complete stone cold bluff. But that's what Morrow's got. Interesting post here from Baron Vanger Toth, and he was talking about the transition from limit to no limit and vice versa. Versa. He says. Well, he says for himself, he goes, I've been playing more and more no limit. And I guess he used to be a limit holding player. And he hasn't found the transition that problematic. And I have to agree with him. Obviously, there is a transition, but it's not that problematic. But he says, I have, however, seen many no limit players go to limit and go crazy as they don't understand a simple concept that people will often have the proper odds to call for most draws. And that is the truth in, in limit hold'em. While in no limit, draws are really a death of you. Rarely will you have the odds to go for something to go for a draw, simply because people will not price you in. While on limit hold'em, it's almost impossible to get somebody off of a draw. And we got a $15 raise, and we're going to see this seven ways. Actually, we're going to see it five ways. I'm sorry. So it's a $75 pot. Flop is ace, five, four, rainbow. And Owen is going to put, I mean, sorry, Ruben is going to put a little bet out there. He's got an ace, and he might get himself in a lot of trouble here because Eric's got a bigger ace. Eric's got ace king, and he's going to raise it right away. And you wonder, is Ruben going to be in trouble here? Yeah, well, Ruben just goes all in. And Ruben, if you remember him from early in the show, he was the luck bucket. He made runner, runner flushes two times, built up to about $500, and now he is all in, drawing to three outs and three outs only. There's a jack, not going to help. And the river's a deuce, and that's not going to do anything either. And Eric's going to take this down with the ace-king. We always say hold him as a game of kickers. Once again, I'm live at the bike. You are live at the bike. We're watching uh, No Limit Hold'em, $200 restricted buy-in game. The blinds are three and five. 
And you can catch us every Monday through Friday from 7 to 10 p.m. Pacific time. There it is. Monday through Friday from, well, it's actually 7 to 10. You have to take my word on that. Owen's got pocket sevens. Got a couple of black sevens there. Harold with the ace, ten of diamonds. So I heard in my ear, Ray wanted to know if I got more excited about the playoffs because of uh, going to the game. And yeah, of course it does, you know. I'm not a huge Laker fan, obviously. I'm not a big NBA fan, but going to anything, going to a sporting event, that always gets you jazzed up. I gotta say, man, if, if it ends up being Lakers Clippers, this town is gonna turn upside down. And we are gonna see this five ways once again raised. We're gonna see a seventy-five dollar pot, actually six ways. So it's a ninety dollar pot. And there's the ace again. And Harold's got the ace. Ace eight five and ace ten is good here. And the turn is an eight, and that changes nothing. Harold is still good here, and he's going to put any money in the pot. Well, you know what? Owen thinks maybe his sevens are good now, and he's going to bet. And Harold's just not very deep here. I mean, the pot is going to be about, and we're going to see it three ways here. Harold did not raise. And the river is a six. And Harold's going to win what probably is his first pot of the night, and he is going to put a little value bet in there, and I like it. At this point, you got to think the race is probably good. And who knows, maybe you get called by nines, tens, in this case, sevens. Now, the only thing is Owen is familiar with Harold's play. And you can see Owen's shaking his head. And Morrow's going to throw this away. And Owen says he missed. I'm not sure what he was going for. He's open-ended now. Uh, I'm not worried about and Harold wins his first pot of the night. Finally pops his cherry. And here I get another email here from Robert Willis here, Bob W. He says he agrees it would be more difficult to have the pre-flop discipline required to move from no limit to limit. Example, 4-5 suited is not a good starting hand in limit, while obviously 4-5 suited might be a good good starting hand in position and no limit holding. Um, yeah, and I, I have to agree. I mean, obviously either transition is difficult, but no limit back to limit is definitely uh, definitely more difficult. 9-6-5. And uh, Morrow has got top pair with a gut shot straight draw. But Eric's going to bet this. Eric's got king seven. He's got a gut shot straight draw with an overcard and backdoor diamonds. Not much of anything there. And, uh, wow, Morrow did not get involved with 9-8. Wow, I'm so really surprised. And Rob's not going to get involved either. He's got bottom pair. No, and Eric's going to take this down on him. What really is just a pure bluff. I'm, su I'm shocked that Morrow threw that hand away. A new player in seat number seven. His name is Ron. He's a uh, live at the bike virgin. See what happens when Bart is not here and it's just me. The sexual overtone of the show just goes crazy. Pocket seven. Seven's going around. Seven's got for uh, Rob in seat number five. Ace deuce for Harold suited. Um, but wow, Eric is going to try to run this table over. He's got queen ten suited. He's going to raise it up to twenty dollars. Actually, twenty more. And uh, well, Rob is going to call, and Harold's going to call with a really weak ace. And there's the weak ace. And this is the problem with ace deuce. How do you know where you're at? And he's going to bet $40, and 
And that's pretty much his customary reign on the flop, whether he hits it or not. And this is the problem for Harold now. Are you just going to call him the whole way? With ace deuce? Now, in limit holding, you got to realize, especially in the 8-16 game, your opponent can only bet $8 here, but now you're calling 40 right away. And he's going to call. Now, obviously, he's in great shape, and there's another ace. Now, that really changes nothing. I mean, it's more unlikely for your opponent to have an ace, but you've got to realize if you're a no-limit player, your kicker sucks here. You have ace-deuce, you have trip aces, and it really doesn't change much. If you were beat on the flop, well, you're still beat. If you were ahead on the flop, well, then you're still ahead. The ace of clubs changes nothing. And Eric's going to take the card now, and he's picked up a lot of draws there, and he does not get there. Wow. It was the ace of clubs. Eric could have gotten a jack. He could have picked up a jack or a club that wasn't a deuce to win the hand. Harold's going to bet now. And we always talk about a weak ace like that. Generally speaking, you're either going to win a small hand or lose a big pot. And... Uh, Harold takes down a, a relatively modest pot there. But had a club come on the river or had a jack come off the river, Harold probably would have gone broke. Button moves over to seat number four. So it was so funny. So I leave the Laker game. I come back here, pick up my stuff, and I see Bart. Bart was actually double fisting and playing in some no limit game. And Bart's telling me how great the game was on Friday night. So, of course, I had to go watch it. And I couldn't believe it. I saw that lineup on Friday night, and I really was not expecting such a great show. I mean, there were five or six hands there that were just absolutely unbelievable, as uh, Bart would say. And uh, we got a $20 raise out of seat two. Amaro raised it up at deuce five. Owen called him with an offsuit nine ten. And, wow, the interesting thing is, the ace comes, and Morrow does not fire. And now he's going to fire, but now Owen's gotten there. Now, i got to tell you, rarely am I raising with deuce five off suit, but if I'm going to raise with deuce five off suit and I get called, and an ace flops and I have a pair, I'm going to bet. See where I'm at. You've got to realize that oftentimes if you're getting called, you're not getting called by an ace. They check it down in the river, and Owen takes it down with a nine. And that seems to be the uh, the basic MO of everybody. Everybody thinks that going from no limit to limit is harder than uh, going from limit to no limit. Button is in seat five. So I watched my Jets draft on Saturday and Sunday. I got to tell you, man, we could have had Reggie Bush, and instead... We got two offensive linemen. Oh, man. How boring is that? Ace, king, ten there. A couple, couple of hearts. Hector's got the biggest ace. Oh, he's got the only ace. Gets checked around three of diamonds on the river, on the turn. And that changes nothing. Actually, I'm sorry, James. Wow, look at that. James has made two pair. He's got kings and threes. Hector did not bet his weak ace. And he's let James make two pair. And he's going to raise it up. And James makes it 50 total. There was a $15 bet from Hector and a $15 call from uh, from Owen. Don't have Owen's cards up there. Hector's going to throw it away, and Owen's going to throw it away. I think Owen had a king only. The river was a four. Wouldn't have changed anything. And uh, James takes it down. Button moves over to seat number six. But I gotta tell you, I woke up, I found out actually Friday night while I'm at the Laker game, I'm in this suite and they've got TVs there and everything. So I'm watching and I see that the Texans actually pass on Reggie Bush and go for Mario Williams. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it. And then I start hearing about the Jets and the 49ers are, are talking to the Saints about moving up. Oh my God, I gotta tell you, I was so excited. I woke up on Saturday morning like a little like a little boy on Christmas. I was thought maybe Reggie Bush was coming to the Jets. I was so excited. But no. I guess it wasn't meant to be. We're going to see this three ways. Limped around. Pot is $17. King, 10, deuce. A couple of spades. And uh, Harold's got two pair. 
and he checks it. And Morrow's going to bet with nothing. He's got E7 of clubs. And Harold's going to check call. Turn is an 8. And I want to say Morrow is drawing dead, and he is. Harold's got the pot, and he checks it. And Morrow's going to continue betting. Got it mixed up. I, I, I got to tell you, sometimes I, I don't like bluffing into a pot, into a, into a flop that is kind of draw heavy. So right now, I don't know if Harold's calling me with a king. In this case, he has two pair. Or could Harold be calling with spades or even a hand like queen jack? And I don't know if I should continue bluffing or not because I don't know what my opponent has. The river's a five, and that changes nothing here. And now Harold's going to put some money in the pot. The classic slow play, slow play, check call, check call. Now I'm going to bet, and Morrow can't call this. The only thing that's kind of interesting here is, now, what would Harold check call, check call with, and now bet? Now, obviously, yeah, he might do this with king 10 or a monster, but might he do this with, say, queen jack or a missed spade draw? Now, I know everybody at home is sitting there going, well, come on, the guy's going to lay it down. It's a seven. But what would Harold bet on the river? What would he check call with, check call with, and now bet? Might he do that with a missed spade draw? I mean, if this guy had, say, queen jack. And look at this, you know what? Morrow's going to call with the ace high, and Harold's going to take it down, two pair. You know, and sometimes when you're playing no limit, you got to kind of piece it all together, especially at the end of the hand when somebody makes a play that doesn't really kind of fit. You know, right now you're seeing a book. It's almost like you're seeing the last page. So you kind of go backwards, and you see if this makes sense. And then based on what he's doing and how the hand is played out, you should be able to put your opponent on a, on a kind of a small range of hands. And you figure the way he played it there, he probably either had a monster, in that case two pair, or he had a, uh, a spade draw or a straight draw. Now he played it really strange in the sense that normally somebody wouldn't slow play a monster with a board of king, ten, deuce with two spades out there. But Harold being a limit hold'em player, probably not new to this and played it a little unorthodox. Jack 8 7, Rainbow. Gary with the Jack. Harold also has a Jack. And Hector's got bottom set. And he's betting his bottom set. I love it. And that might get Gary to call. And sure enough, Gary does call. And that, e that even might get Harold in there, although you never know. You get a bet and an over call. Harold probably is going to lay down Jack 5. No, he's going to call this. And look at that. Now you've built yourself a pot with your set of 7s. And now on the turn, you can make it a $40 bet if you want to. Now the pot is about, say, $70. Uh, $70. And he bets. And he bets 40 I like the bet. He's betting about half the pot, and he gets called. Now Harold gets rid of it, and now the pot is even bigger. And now the ace on the, on the river changes nothing. Now you can bet 80 And you'll probably get called again. And he bets 80 here. And is Gary calling? No, he doesn't call. Wow. You know, it's always an interesting play. The only thing I'm not sure about now, okay, you call a $15 bet on the, on the, on the flop with the jack deuce to see what your opponent's going to do on the turn. Well, now your opponent fires again. Plus a player behind you calls. What are you calling on the turn with? If you don't think you're good there, you're calling there to hit your deuce on the river? Or your jack on the river? I mean, I just don't understand the play. We see that all the time. Somebody calling the turn bet and then folds to the river bet. Now, I'm not an advocate for actually calling on the turn either. But if you're going to call a turn, it just doesn't make much sense. Pocket six is for Eric in the small blinds. Got about ten minutes left in tonight's show. Don't forget, you can catch us tomorrow night. Probably going to play No Limit Hold'em. 5-5 five, five blind games. So 3 to 500 restricted buying game. Plays a little bigger than this. King 8-7. A couple of clubs out there. And Ron has got the uh, big flop form. He's got a second pair with the flush draw. And Ron's going to bet it. Why not? 
And you imagine he's probably going to take it down. He's actually got the best hand and the best draw. What Owen is going to call with Jack-9. Turn is a 7, and Owen is calling with a uh, gut shot straight draw. He needs a 10, but it's got to be an off-suit 10. It can't be a club. And Owen is not going to call a turn bet, and Ron takes it down. Wow, Pojato actually left live at the bike and went home right away. And he's on two plus two already. Pocket nines on the button for Eric. It's usually a raising spot for him. But Ron is going to put a little raise in there first. He's got pocket sevens. And you know what? By raising at 15 there, he's kind of named his price. It's kind of a stop raise once in a while. We talk about that. I see Mo doing it once in a while. I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest, but it seems to work occasionally. I don't really like changing my raises. Sometimes you'll see Mo actually raise kind of a small raise and say pocket fours or pocket deuces. But with his normal hand, he'll raise it bigger. Flop comes out queen, six, deuce, rainbow. And uh, Hector has got a pair of queens, queen nine. Now this actually went, uh, I want to say it was six ways, so it was a $90 pot. And uh, Hector actually checked it. Now Ron puts out a little continuation that he bets 25 into a $90 pot. And now this is a spot now, if you're Eric and you raise this up, now he's going to lay it down. If you raise it up, you might actually get a Hector to throw it away. And now Hector's put to the test here. He's got a he's got top pair, but not much of a kicker, and he's out of position. So he's going to check and call. Now this board is not draw heavy at all. And Owen is going to call also at the second pair, a six. Turn is a jack, changes nothing. Hector's still in the lead here. Oftentimes when I have a weaker hand like that queen nine, I might check call, and then I might actually put a bet out there on the turn. Well, he's going to check and fold in the turn. Nice aggressive play from Ron. Usually aggressive play is rewarded in no limit holds him. Well, actually any, any form of poker. But is him in seat one there? And and you know what? Ron is going to raise it again. A raising machine over there. This guy's got ace jack off suit. And we're going to see it. Uh, actually, it was limped. I'm sorry. I thought he raised it up. Oh, I see. Here we go. A chip rolled on another chip. I thought it was a raise. Well, the flop is 8-5-5. Five, five. Actually, 10-5-5. Five, five. Nobody has a 5, and nobody has a 10. And the turn is a 10. Ever put money in there? If you've had an ace high here, you might want to. Why not? Well, Gary's going to take a shot at it. Gary's got jack 9. Well, he's picked up a spade draw. And he's going to bet that spade draw. And Rob is going to call with the 5. five Rob's got 5-9. Sorry about that. And the river is a six, changes nothing. Rob's got full house here, tens and fives. And Gary's going to bet this, it looks like. Now, there's not much value to raising here. If you raise this, you can probably only get called by a ten. Yeah, and Gary's got nothing. He's got jack high. Get our final chip count here in a second. See how the players did tonight. <laughs> there it is. Almost $4,500 on the table. Wow, Eric's got 1000 Remember, this is only a $200 buy-in game. Gary with 700 
Ron is uh, actually won a couple of hands. We don't have him quite up as high. And uh, we'll see how they're doing now. And there it is. Look at that. Gary up 500. Eric up 500. Now, I guess Eric bought in a couple of times. I thought he had 1,000 in front of him. I didn't realize he bought in that much. James up 480. And Owen down 680. Man, I tell you. That's a lot of money for a $200 game. Guys, it's a lot of fun doing live at the bike here. Bart and I always say we are so lucky to have this job. How many people actually get to talk about poker and get paid for it? Man, got him. Okay. And uh, nobody's going to call Owen here. He's going to take this down. Now, if you want to check out our website, go to liveatthebike.com. You can check out my blog. You can check out bios, terminology, all sorts of fun stuff, poker news. Top left-hand corner, you can subscribe to the archives. For $14.95, you get every single show we've ever done. Okay? I'm talking about shows with Kathy Liebert, Barry Greenstein, Kenna James, Doyle Brunson. They're all labeled there. The famous players are labeled there. And uh, we've had actually, I mean, we've been doing this show for over a year now. I would say that we probably have just about 2,000 hours of content. Enough poker to blow your mind. We're going to see this four ways. King, Jack, four. Rob with top pair. Hearts out there, but nobody's got them. They're all going to check, and the turn is a 10. And uh, the 10 doesn't really help much. I mean, James has now got a pair. He's also got a straight draw, but it's a garbage straight draw. If a queen comes out, anybody with his ace would have a straight. And Rob is going to bet $15 with his king. James with 9, 10. I mean, probably pick a better spot than he is. He's going to throw it away. Eric's not going to get involved either with the threes. And Morrow's got much of nothing here. He's going to throw it away as well. And Rob's going to take it down. And this is going to be our last hand of the night. I had a lot of fun doing the show by myself. i got to say, I do enjoy doing it more with Bart. Um, but it was fun doing it by myself. Appreciate everybody that emailed us tonight. Appreciate 2 plus 2. Thanks a lot. Love to keep the show as interactive as possible. Button moves over to seat number 4. And seat number 3, Owen's got king-queen offsuit. Well, you know he's going to play that hand. Who's there? And Owen's going to make it $15 to go. And I like the raise. In late position, I mean, I'd probably raise it a little bit more, probably more like 20 or 25 But he doesn't have that much money. And that'll probably get Morrow in the hand as well. And Morrow's going to call as well. And we're going to see this four ways, $60 pot to the flops. Actually, five ways? It is. Well, there's the queen. And Owen hasn't won a pot all night, but looks like maybe our last hand he will win. Flop is queen, 7-6. Harold's got second, third pair. I'm sorry, he's got bottom pair. Morrow's got a gut shot straight throw, but Owen has got a continuation bet. And that's a limit hold of mistake there. He bet $20 into a $75 pot. He's giving these people the odds to call. The turn is a 10. He's going to survive that one. Now, this is time to bet about $80 here. And he's going to bet $30. Actually, he's betting $40 into about a $120 pot. Once again, not enough money there. But he's going to get Harold to throw it away, and Morrow's not going to call, and Owen is going to take down what is our last night, last, last hand of the night. And that's going to do it. Pretty exciting. Another night of live at the bike. Done. Finished. There I am. Uh, I want to appreciate it. Thank you all for joining us. Don't forget to watch tomorrow night for No Limit. Five five blinds, three to five hundred. Wednesday night we've got our whale game. Thank you very much for, uh, well, for Bart Hansen, for everybody in the booth, and for me. Thank you very much. It's here. It's big, and it's closer than you think. It's not a tournament. It's what you don't see on TV. The cash is real. The stakes are high. They bet big. They win big. They lose big. High stakes live action poker.
live at the bike. Watch it live on the web or play it if you dare at the Bicycle Casino right here in Los Angeles.